of Troy University football debuts tonight. The Trojans are sporting a new identity and are newcomers to the Sun Belt Conference. Veterans like DeWitt Betterson and Demarcus Ware lead the Trojans into battle at Marshall tonight as Larry Blakeney goes for his second straight win over the highly regarded herd. It's Troy and Marshall next. Welcome you inside C. Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. We've got college football this afternoon. The Troy University Trojans, the coach Larry Blakeney, are in town to take on the Marshall Thundering Herd. Well, hi there. Dave Weekly. happy to be alongside John Gregory, the third member of our broadcast team. Mark Martin will be with us in just a moment. John, we've got two senior-laden teams with plans for big seasons clashing in this season opener. Last year, Troy upset Marshall a week after the herd, knocked off Big 12 Conference champion Kansas State. Troy comes in here today, 17 returning starters, 15 fifth-year seniors, and a terrific tailback in DeWitt Betterson. Yes, this guy is the workhorse of this team. Matter of fact, he's a he preseason all-Sun Belt Conference player. This guy's got great speed. He's got good hands as well, but he hurt his back and didn't get to play in the spring and hasn't had much work here in the preseason, so... Maybe a little concern about fumbling the football today, but this guy's really strong, and they rely on him. DeMarcus Ware might be the fastest defensive end in college football. Yeah, and this guy's 232 pounds, second fastest player on this team. He also has a 38-and-a-half-inch vertical jump, so this guy's a great athlete, and the pro really like this guy. Marshall thinks they've got the horses to get back to the max championship game this year. Last year, Marshall led the Mac in rushing, but a healthy Stan Hill this year means, John, they make back to Marshall football. That's great. Throwing the ball. Yeah, throwing it's really important to Marshall's offense, and nobody's worked harder in the offseason than this guy. Trying to get back from a knee injury that he suffered last year, he's worked extremely hard at that. He's actually worked on his arm so much that it's been hurting a little bit. Hasn't thrown for the past couple days just to rest it up, but he feels really strong, ready to go, and he should be the, be the guy to, do, to lead Marshall. And this team's really tough at home as well. 20 straight wins for, for Marshall at home, 13 straight he at Marshall Stadium, and this team knows how to play at home. They've got great fans, great support, and they're going to be ready to play today. Last season, Troy christened a sold-out movie gallery stadium with an upset of the Thundering Herd. Trust me, Marshall has not forgotten about that. Our kickoff from Huntington is next. Call me. Really? Uh, of course. So, you kiss her? Well, he said, I'm cutting you Your student driver's going solo. Don't insure him with just anybody. Get a State Farm agent. Someone who will help your teenager get the best protection. And young driver discounts will get you the best price. No wonder so many families trust State Farm. Did he get you? Touchstone Energy. Your local electric cooperative. One and the same. So Touchstone Energy is your local cooperative. In fact, the national network adding value and strength to your local cooperative and the local community. What's your connection to Touchstone Energy? Your friends and neighbors at your electric cooperative. Locally, they are Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative, energy, and the power of human connection. Hello? Mrs. Anderson, this is Mark Brown. I'm from the collections department of... Hi. This I'm sorry, I haven't made my payment yet. I'll, I'll get it in as soon as I can. Maybe you should call in charge. They'll work with you. Yeah, no, I'm listening. This is right. You can't be a more than you can manage. Call Charge Debt Solutions, where non-profit companies that put people in control can manage their debt will help the collection calls and will help your interest rate. So you'll have one little monthly payment. Call in charge today. It's Toyota time. The national clearance event at number one Atlanta. Toyota, oh, Ford Tundras and Tacomas from just one seventy nine a month. One seventy nine. It's Toyota time, and you've got to act now at number one Atlanta Toyota, where it's all about price and you. The one you crave is back. Wendy's bacon mushroom melt, warm cheddar cheese sauce and mushrooms, plus hickory smoked bacon. It was worth the wait. So go ahead, Wendy's bacon mushroom melt. It's better here, and our pickup window is open sooner or later. Troy University Trojans football is brought to you by Naturally Fresh. Try preservative-free, naturally fresh 
addressing a EC touchdown, the power of human connection. The city of Troy. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Movie Gallery, where fun is just a play button away. Movie Gallery, play on. And Udell, part of life here. Troy and Marshall, kick off just moments away. Glad you could spend part of your Labor Day weekend with us. John Gregory, our key to the game. First for Troy. Well, for Troy, I think they really need to be steady at the quarterback position. Not make big plays, just try to get, be steady, hand the ball off, and not make turnovers out there. They need to power up that running game. That's what they do best, so they really need to power the football, and they need to rely on their seniors here on the road, and that's very important to be able to play with the seniors on the road. And for Marshall, I think they need to be balanced on the offense. Stan Hill's coming back. They're going to take it slow with him and uh, do a good job of trying to mix it up a little bit. They got to do that. They got to slow Troy's run down and they can't turn the ball over and give gifts to this Troy State football team. Marshall's won the toss. They'll take the ball. Let's send it down to the sidelines. This is the third member of our team today, Martin. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Great to be with you and John and our great crew here today. Weather-wise, well, it's steamy, but hey, it's September. College football. Hurricane France not impacting this game at all. You talk about new seasons, and of course, that brings up various goals, and for Marshall, it's simply to get back into the postseason. Since Bobby Pruitt took over, he's always inherited a team that's played in the postseason. That's not the case, and for Troy, it's all about new. A new name, Troy. New logos to be unveiled next week, and of course, a new conference, and their mission this season is to play for a championship and reach a bowl. Dave? Larry Blakeney, head football coach at Troy, now in his 14th season. Bob Pruitt is in his ninth season for Marshall University. Thomas Olmstead is set to kick off for Troy. Ahmad Bradshaw and Chris Royal are back to receive it for the Thundering Herd. From the goal line, this is Royal. He'll bring it out. Tripped up at the 10-yard line. Good special teams work by Martin for Troy University. Stan Hill will lead the Marshall Thundering Herd offense onto the field. Hill played in only five games last year, suffered a knee injury at Tennessee, aggravated it, and was lost for the season after the Western Michigan game. But he's very efficient, John. In fact, he was second in passing efficiency in 1A college football last year to Phillip Rivers at the time of his season-ending injury. Marshall will start with a one-back set. Earl Charles. Guillory in motion for the Thundering Herd. And here comes Charles. Charles works his way up to the 15-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Time to check now our starting lineups for Marshall. Earl Charles will be at the running back spot. Josh Davis. Freshman Emmanuel Spann, Tramel Guillory at the wideouts. Jeff Mullins is the tight end. This is an offensive line that had some shuffling prior to the season opening game. Nate Griffin at the left tackle. Doug Ligurski, a true freshman at the left guard spot. Jesse Sato, Toby Bullock, and Zach Elsis rounds out the starting lineup for Marshall University. Check the defense for the Troy Trojans. Vic Koning is the defensive coordinator. Demarcus Ware, an All-American candidate and a potential first-round pick at the left-end spot. Georgia Tech transfer Alfred Malone inside along with Eric Thomas. And Cedric Sullivan's an outstanding player in his own right at the right end. This is a good group of linebackers. Robbie Farmer goes out to the strong side linebacking spot. He played in the middle last year. White Ainsley Coe is the strong safety, and Johnny Falk will be at the right cornerback spot. Second down and six. Hill checks the play at the line of scrimmage. Again, a one-back set, and again, it's a handoff to Earl Charles. This time, he tries the right side. He's across the 20 and up near the first down. John Gregory, not exactly a, a series with a lot of history, but we've had some games. They have definitely been explosive led off by last year's game won by Troy and you see Troy was only one of 15 on third down conversions in that game but they made the big play work they had some great special teams play in that game won at 33 24 over Marshall yeah coach Blake called it the biggest win in Troy history so 
Uh, you know how important it was for that team to win that game at home last year. Earl Charles did pick up the first down, so Marshall with a fresh set of downs on their opening possession. First and 10 from their own 21. Again, the handoff goes inside to Earl Charles, and that play is just simply blown up. Cedric Sullivan got great penetration from his left, from his defensive end spot. Yeah, take a look at Diedrich Sullivan here. This guy had a tremendous spring for him when you talk with him. This guy played in all 12 games last year, had 30 tackles, and he's a great athlete on the opposite side of DeMarcus Ware. So they've got two guys that can really get into the backfield and make some tackles for losses. Three wideouts this time for Marshall as Stan Hill will operate from the shotgun for the first time in 2004. Great protection. Now, finally, he finds Davis. And Davis will get back to the line of scrimmage, but not more. Possibly a gain of a yard. It'll be third down and long. It's interesting to see Marshall in this first, first third and long situation. Last year, they were not able to throw the football up the field very much, so uh, they tried to throw underneath passes, and it kept uh, getting underneath their linebackers for Troy State, and they did a good job of preventing Marshall from moving up the field. So uh, you look at it, that play right there, they're just underneath. So it's going to be interesting to see if Marshall can get the ball deep against a very good Troy secondary. Again, Hill will operate from the shotgun. Firing through, sacked. And was that ball fumbled? No. Marshall did recover it. They're, they're going to rule that as a fumble. And it was Ligurski, 66, the true freshman who got there. And here comes the Troy rush. And you're going to see DeMarcus Ware come right off the corner there. Oh. We talked about his speed from the very beginning. This guy's got great speed, as we said, pro, spec, prospect, pro prospect. The pros actually love this guy, and you can see the speed he has right there coming off the edge. Boy, it's just like a track meet when the ball is snapped. Ian O'Connor is set to punt for Marshall. Ball, no fair catch. And he is immediately brought down by Marshall's Dennis Thornton. Troy University, the Trojans go on offense for the first time in the 2004 season. When we return to Huntington, no score. Hi, I'm Coach Blakeman from Troy University. And from my experience, it's tough to put a guarantee on anything. Man, if I could promise a win in every game, well, I'd be just like movie guys. Did you know that if you're not 100% satisfied with a movie or game rental, Movie Gallery will give you another absolutely free. It's called the Play On Promise, and it's Movie Gallery's guarantee that you'll have a good time. So relax, rent the day, and enjoy. Touchstone Energy, your electric cooperative. What are you saying? So Touchstone Energy is your local cooperative. In fact, it's a national network adding value and strength to your local cooperative and the local community. What's your connection to Touchstone Energy? Your friends and neighbors at your electric cooperative. Locally, they are Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative. Energy and the power of human connection. <laughs> Hello, I'm Daniel Hobbs, your host of a new and exciting television show, U.S. Golf Weekly. Each week, I'll interview some of your favorite celebrity guests while we travel to some of the best golf destinations in the Southeast. Join me every Saturday morning at 11.30 on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. U.S. Golf Weekly, brought to you by Cadillac. Troy, with their opportunity, at the football for the first time in the 2004 season. Larry Blakeney had to like what he saw. John Gregory from that Trojans defense. DeMarcus Ware went right around Nate Griffin for his first sack of the year. Yeah, you take a look at that. That's a big thing for Marshall is they made a switch. They moved Nate Griffin to the left side this year. Last year, he was on the right side as a tackle. Gave up no sacks all year. This year, first play, first long situation. They get a sack from his side. So we'll have to watch that and see. But I got a feeling with DeMarcus Ware out there, you're going to have a lot of sacks no matter what position you're playing. Aaron Leak, the senior from Durham, North Carolina, is the quarterback for the Trojans. He prepared extremely hard in the offseason for his senior year. Lost 15 pounds. And immediately he will go back to pass. And he is sending this one down the field for Samples, who makes a circus catch at the Marshall 15. 
A 37-yard reception by Jason Samples on first down. What a way to start the year for Troy. You know, we talk about not giving up the big plays for Marshall. Well, this is exactly what Troy State wanted to do. Quiet this crowd down right from the beginning. And then who do they go to? Their big play guy, Jason Samples. This guy, 6'1", 195-pound senior. A little bit of a fake option there. Got the DBs to suck up a little bit and was able to throw it over the top on him there for a big play. Now, Troy finished dead last, 117th last year in passing efficiency in college football. Well, they're one for one with a big play in 2004. Here's Betterson trying to bounce this to the outside, and he is submarined by Roberto Terrell. Time to check the offense for Troy. Betterson and Dawkins will be in the backfield. James Earl Cray at the flanker spot. Jason Samples is the split end. Jordan Leslie takes over at tight end. This offensive line is stronger on the left side where Tillis and Lewis out operate. Milliner at center. Donnie Boston coming back from a broken leg at the right guard spot. And Kenny Griffin mans the right tackle. A gain of a yard for Betterson from the eye on second down and nine. Leak on the option. Keeps it inside the 10, inside the 5, to the end zone. Touchdown, Troy. A 15-yard run to the end zone. Leak carries the man into the end zone, and just like that, Troy leads 6-0. Well, you talk about the passing efficiency on this team. This is their bread and butter. They love to run the football, and this quarterback can both run it and throw it. He does a good job here of taking the option outside, had a wide open area there, just cut it up inside, and there was nobody around. Troy did a good job of blocking that. Greg Wibbs will handle the extra point, and he shoots it through, and Troy has a 7-0 lead, and this crowd at the Joan in Huntington, West Virginia is stunned. Troy leads Marshall 7-0, 10.36 to go in the first. With other nationwide plans, you're only covered if you call on their network. Step off their network and whoa, whoa! But with Unicel's true nationwide calling, there's never any roaming fees. So your minutes work everywhere your phone does, anywhere in the country. Experience wireless the way it should be. Bring your number to Unicel today. It is said that only the rightful heir to the riches of Fountain shall possess the power to remove the scoop. He has been found. So people give you their order. I can't cook their order to order. Right. People order, then I order you to cook the order to order. In that order. Exactly. Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. It's Toyota time. The national clearance event at number one Atlanta Toyota. Oh, four Tundras and Tacomas from just one seventy nine a month. One seventy nine. It's Toyota time, and you've got to act now at number one Atlanta Toyota, where it's all about price and you. The one you crave is back. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. Warm cheddar cheese sauce and mushrooms, plus hickory smoked bacon. It was worth the wait, but go ahead. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. It's better here, and our pickup window is open till midnight or later. Troy 7, Marshall nothing. 10.36 to go in the opening quarter. The herd will get the football in a moment. Down to the sidelines and a Mark Martin. Dave, what a difference a year makes for Aaron Leak. This time last September, he had only been in the program a few weeks, arriving in late August. He eventually became the team starter in the 6-4 record, but his lack of a spring practice, fall camp, sometimes he did throw for over 1,000 yards, but he threw 12 interceptions, only 7 touchdowns. You mentioned it, Dave. He's lost weight. He's in great shape, and he's been pushed by some great quarterbacks, and right now he shows he is the man for Troy in 2004. Oh, he's off to a terrific start, no question about that. Olmstead with the kick from the one-yard line. This is Royal. Again, good special team coverage by Troy as they can only reach the 17-yard line. So two kickoffs by the special teams unit for Troy, and Marshall hasn't reached the 20-yard line yet. Johnny Falk made the stop. Now, Coach Pruitt said, you never know how good you are until you've been stressed. Well, after that first drive for Troy State and the way they played defense there, I think Marshall's in a stressful situation right now. Troy's got just what they want. They've got the momentum early in this ball game. 
And Marshall's faced with a very tough defense here. On first and 10, Stan Hill will be under center, and now he shifts back into the shotgun. Earl Charles will be a wing, four wideouts. Pass is caught. This is the first catch for Marshall's true freshman, Emmanuel Spann. And Marshall's really excited about this guy. He's another freshman in line to get the start here, just like Josh Davis did when he first came here as well. So Marshall trying to get outside a little bit, trying to get away from that speed. But one thing they do have on the corners, they still have speed, and the pursuit from their linebackers and strong safeties is very good. You'll see them playing a cover two defense today, and they really like to get their corners involved in the running game. Three wide this time for Marshall on second down and eight. Two wide receivers to the right for Hill, again from the gun. Here comes the blitz, and the pass is batted down. And it's Sullivan who got a big hand up there and slapped it away. And just like that, Marshall is facing third and long again. And right now, the Troy defense has Marshall on their heels. Yeah, you take a look at this, Sullivan coming in, and what, what they teach you to do is if you can't get to the quarterback, try to get your hands up in the air and try to knock it down, and that's exactly what he did there. Well-coached football team, this Troy State football team, and you'll see that all day. If they can't get to the quarterback, they'll do whatever they can to prevent that ball from going up the field. Everybody wants to talk about DeMarcus Ware. How about some love for Cedric Sullivan? Third down along seven. Nose of the football at the Marshall 20. Hill. Protection's good this time. Thrown across the middle, nearly intercepted, and it is picked off. That pass was tipped and intercepted, and Troy comes up with another turnover, and the, it's Robbie Farmer, the strong side linebacker, coming up with the interception. Farmer does a good guy. You talk about another fifth-year senior. This is a guy with experience, but this ball's tipped, and they do a good job of keeping people in front of Hill on this. He tries to force it in the middle there. The guy was not open. He tried to get it inside there. Stan's been out for a year. He's got. A, he's a little bit anxious right now. He's just got to pick his spots. If they don't have it, he's just got to throw it away. But uh, Troy does a good job there of stuffing that up, knocking the ball in the air, and doing their chip, chip drill and uh, taking that down. Big field position for Troy. Tipped by Bernard Davis, intercepted by Farmer. A golden opportunity for more points for Troy. And we've got some movement up front, and it looks like this one will go against the Trojans. But what a quick start on the road by Troy. Yeah, and he, he, he talked about that at the top of the number of seniors they have out there. When you have a young football team playing on the road, it's very difficult to do that. Rick Doan is our referee today. This is a crew from the Sun Belt Conference. First down and 15. Yeah, you can't, you really can't uh, stress enough how much senior leadership and what that does for a team. Marshall as well have a bunch of seniors on their team too, so they need to step up and make some plays as well. Play action. Leak back to pass. Complete to the Marshall 22-yard line. And the reception is made by James Earl Cray, sophomore from Hazelhurst, Georgia, at Jeff Davis High School. Troy likes this guy. They say he could be the biggest surprise on this team after having a great spring. He makes big plays in the spring. He's a high school quarterback, wide receiver, running back, defensive back. He returned kicks. He did everything in high school, and they really like this guy, and they think he has a lot of potential. Well, one thing that Troy was trying to stress in the spring and in fall camp was finding a complement receiver to sample. They hope Cray can be that. Second down and four. Here's Betterson. Good penetration by the Marshall line another flag is down betterson is down at the marshall 18 he's got the first down but this may come back troy trying to get the ball outside there a little bit you think about dewitt betterson running it up inside this guy's really strong and can take it inside well there's a good example of how he can also take it outside he's really the full package he can do an awful lot with the football and makes makes it very di very difficult on a defense still talking this over and if you've just tuned in and you're expecting Marshall and their their normal home opener against a one double a opponent that's not happening today Marshall is playing Troy 1a out of the Sun Belt Conference motion against Troy so take the first down run by Betterson off the board in fact Marshall is playing no 1AA opponents this year. 
and neither is Troy. They are both at the 1A level now, and all opponents for both these teams this season are 1A. Second down and eight. Here's Leak. Good protection again. Finally throws it away, and that's a good play by a veteran quarterback. Yeah, Marshall did a good job right there on defense. Nobody was open. Leak went back there, didn't turn the ball over, did what he was supposed to do. They asked him not to make too many big plays or too many big mistakes. Just be consistent out there, and we talked about that at the top of this as well. Marshall does a good job defensively there. Nowhere to throw the football, so he just takes what he has and throws it away. John, that was a good example of the maturing of Aaron Leak. He did get a chance to go through spring practice this year, and Larry Blakeman made the comment that Leak spent more time in the decision-making process. When to eat the football, when to throw that ball away. Third and long, leak again. Here comes a Marshall rush. The pass is incomplete. Right up the middle, it was Reggie Hayes providing the push that forced Leak to throw the football a little early. And Marshall did get some penetration there, and that's what they need to do against this good veteran offensive line of Troy. Troy's got guys with great size up there and plenty of experience on the offensive line. Marshall, on the other hand, defensively, they've got size as well. Missing a few guys, but they, they've got to be able to stop this run and take away that short passing game. Thomas Olmstead will attempt the field. This will come from the rush and be a 45-yard attempt. Kick is away. Kick is short. No good. The Marshall defense holds. So Troy unable to capitalize on the interception by Farmer, and the Thundering Herd will get the ball back. Olmstead last year handled all the kicking chores. Short field goals, long field goals, kickoffs, and punting. He will continue to handle the kickoffs and the long field goal attempts, but the short field goals will be attempted by Greg Wibbs. Well, the Sunbelt Conference, Greg, has really been a work in progress. Let's go ahead and check the teams that are in the Sun Belt this season. Arkansas State, Idaho, Louisiana Lafayette, Louisiana Monroe, Middle Tennessee State, New Mexico State, North Texas is the defending champ. Troy was picked second in the preseason coaches poll, and Utah State. First and 10 from the 28 for Marshall. Play action for Hill. Again, terrific penetration. Firing through and collecting the sack was Larry Brown. Next year, the Sun Belt Conference would have, will have a little bit of a different look. Arkansas State remains. Florida Atlantic comes in. Louisiana Lafayette, Louisiana Monroe, Middle Tennessee State return. Florida International joins North Texas and Troy round out the Sun Belt lineup in 2005. Marshall trying to get the ball deep on that last play. We talked earlier about throwing it underneath. I think they want to try to stretch Troy's offense or defense a little bit, so they tried to get the ball up the field. They need to protect the quarterback a little bit more, give Stan time to move the ball up the field. Second down and 15. Hill on the pump. They're going to send this one long, and the pass is too tall, intended for Tramel Guillory. Again, you see Marshall trying to move the ball up the field. What that does, even if it's not a successful play, it expands that defense a little bit. Troy's so good at stopping the run. Marshall wants to spread it out, try to open up some lanes underneath so they can throw behind the linebackers. I wouldn't be surprised to see Marshall do a little bit more play action and try to hit behind the linebackers because last year they were not able to throw the ball up the field behind this Troy defense. One of the characteristics of this opening quarter for Marshall to this point has been third and long, facing third and 15 from their 23. Hill again. Here comes the pressure again. Escape, throws, incomplete. Was trying to throw it back. For Sean Lazon, incomplete. And so a frustrated Stan Hill and an equally frustrated Marshall offensive unit will leave the field and Troy will get the ball and should have good field position. Again, Troy does a good job of penetrating, moving Hill out of the pocket. With that knee injury, that's something last year when Marshall started off against Tennessee, he was able to run the football and be another threat. This year, we'll have to see with that knee if he's going to be able to do that or not for this Marshall football team. Ian O'Connor, the freshman from Knoxville, with another kick. Falk will watch this one sail out of bounds at the 44-yard line. A 33-yard effort by O'Connor. 
7.28 to go in the opening quarter. Lots of defensive pressure so far by Troy. And the Trojans lead the herd 7-0. Troy University is high tech, it's high touch, it's international, it's focused, it's student driven, it's caring, family oriented university. All of those things didn't occur overnight. They were built one brick at a time and eventually you fall and then eventually have the cathedral and we think that's what's been built at Troy. But if you had to prioritize what we do, first and foremost our teaching responsibility is at the heart of what we do because we owe the very best of teaching to our students. Call me? Really? Uh, of course. <laughs> Kiss her? Well, he said, I'm cutting you loose. Your student driver's going solo. Don't insure him with just anybody. Get a state farm agent, someone who will help your teenager get the best protection and young driver discounts that get you the best price. No wonder so many families trust state farm. Did he kiss her? Imagine a global company that understands the most complex financial decisions you'll ever make. Imagine a corporation that can speak your language, whatever it may be. Imagine an organization that's flexible and focused on your individual financial needs. We're GMAC. Imagine how we can work for you, down the block or around the globe. Troy 7, Marshall, nothing, 7.28 to go, opening period. Vic Koenig, right there, the defensive coordinator for Troy. He's got nine returning starters. Seven are potential all Sunbelt Conference picks. Three Marshall possessions. Zero total yards in his second season since taking over for Wayne Bolt. Vic Koning's off to a great start in Huntington this afternoon. Fake to Richardson. Here's Leak on the pass. Incomplete. Had a wide open receiver across the field there. They had a good fake. Little bootleg on the outside. Leek just let that get away from him a little bit. He seems like he just kind of rushed out a bit. You can see he had a guy wide open in a big possible play for Troy. So Jermaine Richardson, a fifth-year senior from Pensacola, is in at the tailback spot for Larry Blakeney. He suffered a season-ending knee injury in Troy's upset of Marshall last season. Second down and 10. You can see Troy with outstanding field position in the early going here. Here's Leek looking, going to tuck it, going to run it. Take it down to the Troy 49-yard line. It'll be third down and four. And, and again, Marshall does a pretty good job here on defense. Nobody open. Leak doesn't throw the ball away. Does a good job here of taking it up, getting what he can. Picks up about five yards. Puts him in a good situation for third down and five. Tackle was made by Curtis Keyes, the redshirt sophomore from Mount Olive, Mississippi. And there's Jameis Martin, 99 in green for Marshall. First team All-Mac last season. And this Marshall defensive line that's a little short-handed today. Leak needs a timeout. And he'll take it to the sidelines. Troy using the first of their three timeouts here in the first half. Well, there you see Leak's numbers from last season. And you can see he's effective when he carries the football. Yeah, he can, he can run the football. There's no question about that. This team is, uh, he's very good when he gets outside. A lot of times they'll try to move the pocket with them. You can see him when he drops straight back. Sometimes he gets his little feet moving around too quick back there. He needs to sit down a little bit, try to pick out a receiver. But that comes from a guy that likes to run the football. Here's a look at some of the numbers from last season. And you can see Marshall averaging almost 30 points a game. Points were really a problem last year for Troy. You can see the passing numbers for Marshall and the rushing totals for the Thundering Herd were the best in the Mid-American Conference. Well, Leak hit the big 37-yard pass to Jason Samples on the first offensive snap for Troy, and it set up the 15-yard touchdown run by Leak, but he's misfired on his last three passing attempts, so after burning a timeout, Troy with great field position at their own 49, facing third down and four. Richardson will stay in there. Dawkins is at the fullback spot as they operate from the power eye. Play action for Leak. Going to send this one down the field. Incomplete. 
The pass was intended for Eugene Hampton. Mariah Anderson came over from his safety spot, and Willie Smith had the coverage as well for the herd. Marshall does a good job there of making him throw the ball over the top. He laid it out there nice. If you, if you can't, receiver can't catch it, you want to put it in a spot where nobody can't, nobody else can catch it either. So he does a good job there of not turning the ball over again and just giving yourself a team to punt this away and put Marshall deep in their own territory. Olmstead will punt the football. Chris Royal set to receive it. High, short kick. Royal rushing up will make a fair catch. A dangerous play. A check it into the, into the end zone for a touchback. Marshall will have it at the 20-yard line. Officially a 50-yard punt. So Marshall gearing up for their fourth possession here in the opening quarter. Other scores from around the Mid-American Conference. Oklahoma pulls away from Bowling Green, winning 40 to 24. Iowa defeated Kent State 39 to 7. The flashes without Joshua Cribb, who was suspended for this game. Wisconsin defeats UCF. George O'Leary was not on the sideline for the Golden Knights, attended the funeral of his mother today. Michigan blows out Miami of Ohio after a tight first half. Penn State leading Akron. And Northern Illinois at College Park tonight. Last year, they beat the Terps in overtime in DeKalb. <laughs> Earl Charles finally got rolling. And he takes it up to the 16-yard line. That's a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Sometimes one of the best ways to stop a pass rush is to run right at teams. You should see that here. They just went after Sullivan. He's been doing a good job of penetrating. Looks like he may have had a little bit of holding right there. Had grabbed a bunch of jersey, but still opened up a hole right there. And that's what Marshall may try to do is run straight at this defense, try to eliminate that rush a little bit. Marshall will go with two tight ends. Hiram Moore is in motion on second down and three. Hand off Earl Charles. Going to bounce it outside. Got the first down. Got Moore across the 35. Still rolling across the 30. Up to the 32-yard line. A gain of 16. Earl Charles, the senior. Tailback of the Marshall Thundering Herd. Does a good job there. You can see some power on that. Earl Charles takes it. Kind of a cutback play. You may see a guard or tackle coming back on the backside here. Or a tight end coming in. They do a good job of opening up the hole. He takes it outside. And watch him put lower his head right here and run over. A freshman, welcome to NCAA football right here. You see a freshman get run over. Leotis and Kelvin here at the end. Takes a big hit, but does a good job of slowing him down, lets his teammates come and make the play. First and 10 for Marshall at the 32-yard line. Ahmad Bradshaw, his first carry as a member of the Thundering Herd. Romping and stomping and nearly picks up 10. He may have the first down at the 43-yard line. The true freshman, number 44 in green, Ahmad Bradshaw from Bluefield. Well, let's, let's take a look at this. He's coming right at us here. He'll cut back. They say this guy can really make people miss. He does a good job of carrying the football there, keeping his eyes open, and keeps his legs moving. They really like him about that. Flag on the play. Offsides the call against Troy. Marshall will decline it. And Ahmad Bradshaw, that is not a misprint. Amazing total in high school at Graham, Virginia. A class double-A power in the Old Dominion. Look at that, 92 touchdowns in his high school career. Yeah, ranked seventh best player in the state of Virginia. And they've got some great players that come out of the state of Virginia, so he's a good get for Marshall. We'll see Bradshaw also returning kicks at some point today. Marshall now two first downs in this drive, their fourth of the season. Bradshaw again. Great penetration that time by Robbie Farmer. He's already got an interception in the quarter for Troy. That time he slowed Bradshaw. Down to the sidelines. What's up, Mark? Well, David, looks like this offense may be starting to get in gear for Marshall. You know, they have a great offensive line coach in Mark McHale, but he certainly had his work cut out for him in the spring and in the preseason because he lost three guys from last year's offense who spent some time in NFL camps. Of course, he has a true freshman in Doug Ligurski out there at one of the guards, but this is a guy that knows great football players. He's the gentleman who once recruited a guy by the name of Brett Favre. Thanks, Mark. Earl Charles on the carry, tried the left side, and there was just nowhere to run. When smack into the arms of the middle linebacker, Laverne Johnson. 
Boy, Laverne Johnson, this guy played 10 games last year for him with 56, 55 tackles. He's a quick, physical guy. He loves to hit. They really like this guy. He's a power hitter, and that gets him excited to get in there, stick his nose in there, and do a good job. Johnson will leave the field on third down and 12. Marshall at the 41-yard line. Josh Davis is split out wide to the right. Marshall will use three wide receivers, and now Hill will go back in the gun. Just got the playoff. Hill waiting, throwing, pass is caught. This is Davis, and Davis takes it into Troy territory, and he's got the first down at the Troy 43. Marshall does a good job there of trying to get the ball up the field a little bit. What they do is Troy gives them a wide open spot right there. Off defensive lineman really backs up and tries to play linebacker. David Tramble kind of backs up and he just sits across the middle. Davis does right there. He doesn't have man coverage, just kind of sits there and says, throw me the football, was able to get the first down for Marshall. Josh Davis just moved into fifth place all time in Mac receiving yards, passing Northern Illinois' Justin McCarrens, who will be playing for the New York Jets this year. On first down, it's Charles, and Marshall's offensive line beginning to assert itself a little more. They won the battle up front that time. A three-yard gain, it'll be second down and seven. Yeah, Marshall's running a lot of misdirection. They're using their tight end as kind of a fullback. They put him in motion or send him back the other direction, then kind of run like a little bit of a counter play. Instead of using an offensive lineman, they're using their tight end to try to kick these quick defensive linemen out once they've, once they've penetrated, and they've been successful on this drive with doing that. Good look at the right side of the line. Toby Bullock and Zach Els is for Marshall. Mullins, the tight end in motion. Here's the pass. Caught across the 40, and to the 39 is Bradshaw, but really could not get rolling. It'll be third down and seven. Stop on the play made by Freeman White. Boy, you just look around this Troy defense. They've got veterans everywhere. Yes, and that guy's a preseason all Sun Belt Conference as well. He's a guy, another guy, though, that didn't get to practice in the spring. He was rehabbing from a knee injury. They've got about five guys, six guys on this team that had no spring experience this year because they were rehabbing from broken arms, knee injuries, and things like that. White's a great student. He's already earned his undergrad degree in biology. There's the pass, and it is caught. Wrestling for the ball, the catch was made by Davis up at the 30-yard line. So Marshall now starting to convert some of these third and long. Yep, and you can see if Marshall has a little time to throw right there, Hill can do a good job of getting it in there. Does a nice job on the curl route right here. Davis comes back, helps his quarterback out, comes back to the ball. They do a good job. But as you can see, Troy is right on top of it. There's not a lot of run yards after the catch there. Well, White may have his biology degree, but Davis won that battle for the football. Marshall, first and 10 at the Trojan 30. Deep handoff to Charles, trying to bounce it outside. Look at that Troy penetration. Shooting through there, making the stop. Ronald Harper and Johnny Falk is down. Again, you see these guys coming off the corner. They really get involved in the running game right here, and you can see a corner coming up. You have a wide receiver trying to block him, and he's making the tackle inside the hash. So tell these guys off the corner. They really like to look from the outside in. They play that two-deep coverage where they roll their corners up and play the wide receivers real close, and they look for the run first. They do a good job of funneling the receivers to the inside and try to make their safeties stop the pass. So it really gets them involved in the running game. Now, 12th play of the drive coming up. Falk is the best cover corner for Troy. And Stan Hill is going to take a timeout. So Marshall burns the first of their three timeouts, stops the clock with 23 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. And Falk looks like he'll be back in there sooner than later. John, let me ask you, as a former college football player, first game of the season, how difficult is it to keep the butterflies and the emotion in check and focus on your assignment on the field? Well, I, I, it may be difficult if you're a freshmen, sophomore, things like that. But as you talked about, the leadership on both of these teams, fifth-year seniors, they've been there, done that before. This Troy team's played in Oklahoma, at Kansas State. They've been all over the country playing. They've, they've logged so many miles over the past three years and played in big stadiums. So coming here doesn't intimidate this football team at all.
But for the younger guys, it may make a little bit of a difference. But uh, I'll tell you, once the ball snaps and once you start playing, once you get into that first quarter, you really forget about all that and try to concentrate on what your assignment is. Well, Troy, next Thursday night has a huge opportunity, a prime time game on ESPN2. They will host Missouri. And you can ask Marshall how difficult it is to win under the lights in Troy. Yeah, we talked about Coach Blakeman saying that was the biggest game in history last year with that win. I guarantee you if they win that game, he'll take that statement back and say that's the biggest win in their history. But this Troy team playing at home, new stadium, the way they get fired up down there, I think they've got a great opportunity to take this team at home and do a good job with it. Empty backfield this time as Hill operates from the gun. The tailback, Bradshaw, a split out to the right. Hill over the middle. Pass is caught down to the Troy 27-yard line. First opportunity for Stan Hill to throw to the tight end today, and he hooks up with Jeff Mullins, the fifth-year senior from Gallup Police, Ohio. Again, Marshall finding the throwing lane over the middle so far. Curls that come back to the inside, throwing the ball over the middle. A lot of times, Troy's dropping guys back, so that's the place to throw right now. Well, Mullins takes over for Jason Rader, who's in the camp of the Atlanta Falcons. A hard-hitting first half. We're heading to the second quarter in Huntington. Troy 7, Marshall nothing. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 7.30 Eastern for live college football as North Alabama visits Tusculum. Then stay tuned for championship boxing. Sunday afternoons belong to South Carolina football on CSS. Tune in at 3 o'clock Eastern for the Lou Holtz Show. Then stay tuned for the encore presentation of the South Carolina Vanderbilt game. Starting at 3.30 Eastern, CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Before broadband, I was far from efficient online, and, and soon I was becoming less efficient in other ways. But <laughs> that all changed when I got Comcast high-speed internet. There's no phone lines like with dial-up or DSL, so everything's faster and more efficient. Like me. That was then. This is Comcast. Joe's favorite recipe is perfection. Thanks to the fine-tuned cooking of natural gas. Efficient, reliable, ready when you are. Ah, for cooking, heating, and hot water, you're always comfortable with natural gas. Insist on homes with the natural gas advantage. Troy 7, Marshall nothing. John, it's pretty easy to understand which team she's rooting for. It's right there on her jersey. She's got an intense look on her face. She must know somebody out there on the field. You know, this is a late arriving crowd here at the Joan in Huntington, and they missed all the early fireworks. Aaron Leak, a 15-yard touchdown run for Troy. That's the only score, but Marshall, as we head to the second quarter, dominant in the time of possession controlling the football for 11 and a half minutes of the opening 15 minutes of play. Thing about that, later in the ball game, that could matter a little bit more now. You look at the scoreboard and Troy's up on top, but if Marshall can continue to move the football like that and keep Troy's defense out there, that may wear them down in the opening game of the year. 12th play of the drive, third down and seven from the Troy 27. Hill, the pass, it's caught, 15-yard line. And it's Sean Lazan with the reception. Again, you see Marshall throwing the ball over the middle of the field. That two deep coverage. You can find guys over the middle a lot of times. Either that or have deep corners to the, to the back corners of the end zone or deep angles to the outside. So Marshall does a good job of pushing the ball up the center of the field. May see Troy change up a little bit and move into more of a three deep coverage where they have a free safety in the center of the field. Sean Lazan was really one of the big surprises of the spring. Got great size, 6'6", 204 from Virginia Beach. First and 10 for Marshall at the 15. Earl Charles, and there was just nowhere to run. The moment Charles got the football, he was surrounded by a trio of Troy defenders and did well just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a big defensive front for Troy. They, they get good penetration. They haven't been able to run the ball on the inside. That's why they were trying to trick him a little bit, 
running some type of counters and things like that. Wouldn't be surprised to see Marshall, if Hill's healthy enough, to kind of bootleg off of that and try to hit some tight ends in the flat and things after after trying to run the ball inside and getting stuffed like that. Boy, the big guys in the middle, Alfred Malone, Demarcus Ware, Eric Thomas really got it done, and that pass was knocked away by Ware, and he is having his way out there along with Sullivan in the early goings of this game. That's the second time Sullivan's been able to get his hands up in the air right there and do that. May look for Marshall to start trying to cut him a little bit from that line of scrimmage right there and not allow him to get his hands inside there and knock those down. Boy, what a great pair of defensive ends Troy possesses. Sullivan, a 232-pound senior from Houston, Texas, and Demarcus Ware from Auburn High School. Third and 11 from the 16. Once again, empty backfield look. Here's Hill from the gun. Finally throwing, incomplete. Little contact at the five-yard line. Ansley and Span get tied up, and no call. It's fourth down. And Mar Marshall fans looking for a little bit of a pass interference here. I think Marshall, uh, again, looking over the middle right here. Can't see it right there. He did grab him a little bit before that, but I don't think it was a pass interference. So, uh, again, Troy does a good job of preventing Marshall from scoring here in the red zone. It'll be a 32-yard attempt for Ian O'Connor, his first varsity field goal attempt. And it's good. So Marshall is on the board for the first time in 2004. Ian O'Connor, a 32-yard field goal. 13.49 to go in the first half. Troy 7, Marshall 3. Put me to the library. No, right now I'm a little busy. For car insurance, your growing family can afford. Hey, Anna, I need a ride to my volleyball game. And I need to go to football practice. After I finish my homework. There's no better place to call than Alpha. Anna, do you want to go to the mall? Yeah. Hello, car insurance rate. Fast, fair, plain, smooth. Come on in. Have a seat and I'll be right back. I've never actually done this on my second date before, but I really liked it. I thought maybe we could do something different, more exciting, you know, fresh. Here we go. Surprise! Surprise? Doesn't that to look fresh? Light ranch dressing? Don't silly. Get fresh with someone tonight. Look for it. Join us on the Gem Shopping Network, featuring the original Gemstone Show. Each day, we showcase the finest in natural gemstones and jewelry with informative and educational shows. Our fully staffed jewelry department fabricates first-class jewelry on the premises with fine gemstones and fine diamond accents. Our expert gemologists travel and handpick the most beautiful gems available, which are then cut by our experienced cutters. Our hosts sell these gems live and ship them to your doorstep. Join us on the home of the original Gemstone Show, the Gem Shopping Network. 7-3, Troy with the football, Stan Hill on the phone upstairs, and we'll send it downstairs to our Mark Martin. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. Marshall's Ian O'Connor is going to be a busy man this season. That's just the way he likes it. Last season, he handled all the kickoffs in Marshall's 12 games. This year, he came to camp wanting to be the team's punter and place kicker. Growing up in Knoxville, Tennessee, he nailed a 52-yard field goal during his high school career and set a record with five field goals a game. He's only 19, and he's the elder statesman of Marshall kickers. That's right. Thanks, Mark. Got a couple of true freshman kickers in Marshall's camp, and O'Connor suddenly finds himself as the old man of the bunch. And O'Connor sends this one into the end zone for a touchback. And, John, you were talking about it in the break. Troy's field position has, been, uh, ha has not been that good since the early portion of the game. Let's take a look. Marshall is really thin along the defensive line for this game because of some suspensions. Jonathan Goddard, an all-MAC candidate, starter at defensive end, will play in the second half. Dante Newsom is suspended for the first half. Demarcus Thomas, a backup defensive end. Adrian Davis, a backup lineman. And a starter in the middle, Jamal Weiss, are suspended for this game. And there's Jonathan Goddard. We anticipate we will see him a lot in the second half. First and 10 for Troy at the 20. Handoff, Betterson. 
And Bederson is tripped up by Deontay Wilson. Marshall has a trio of senior linebackers, and Wilson got Bederson down. Yeah, he was fourth on the team in tackles last year. He's a guy that loves to get involved in it, too. All their linebackers, these guys are good leaders on this Marshall defensive team, and their guys going to step up and try to make Troy work this entire length of the field this time with the ball. Well, the college career of highly regarded true freshman D.T. McDowell from Stone Mountain, Georgia, is underway. He is in the game, subbing for Aaron Leak on this series. Second down and nine. Pitch back to Bederson. Flags are down. McDowell, a playmaker, number 20, among rivals' top 50 players in the state of Georgia. Played some baseball in June for the Mesa Angels and the Anaheim Angels chain. A highly regarded player. The penalty will go against Troy. Came down, John, in his college selection between Troy and Nebraska. There was a, a coaching change. Bill Callahan took over at Nebraska. And McDowell showed up right before the start of classes, and now he's in his first game. And Coach Blakeney talked about it. Boy, was he excited when he, when he showed up for camp. He couldn't believe he was there. Didn't think it was going to happen, so they're excited to have him. McDowell in the shotgun on second down and 14. And there's movement again. Marshall signifies, hey, it was the right side of the Troy line. We'll see what happens. And these are understandable mistakes for our true freshmen. Yeah, and it's not just that. He, he may be, he's got a different count than Aaron Leak has. So the offensive linemen get used to hearing one particular count. You'll see that in the pros too. When they switch quarterbacks like that, they get into a rhythm. They get used to a hit, listening to a quarterback and how his cadence is. So big difference between two different guys out there and the offensive line has to be prepared for that and get used to it. Just like the center and quarterback exchanges it becomes a little bit of a problem too. Yeah, BT McDowell and the Troy offense this time making things hard on Mark Fleetwood, the, the coordinator for Troy. Now second down and 19. The Trojans at their own 11. Samples in motion. Pitch back Betterson. And look at Betterson shedding tacklers as he crosses the 20 and gets out to the 21 yard line for a quick pickup of 10. Well, you can see the speed on Betterson right there. Somebody made a shoestring tackle inside here. Maybe we can see who it is right here. If he didn't, if he didn't make that play, Betterson had a chance to go an awfully long way on that play. Betterson gives as good as he gets. He really handles running in traffic between the tackles very, very well. Curtis Tease does a good job there of grabbing the foot of Betterson and getting him down because if he didn't, he was off to the races. He is a load to be sure. Third and eight. Again, it's Betterson. This time, nowhere to go. Bumped out of bounds. And McDowell will get back on the phone up to the Troy coaches, and the Trojans will have to punt the ball away. You see Troy being a little bit conservative there. When you have a freshman quarterback in there and you get backed up like that, you have to become a little bit conservative and not turn the ball over. Well, Betterson really hasn't gotten rolling yet, but he will wear down the defense. 17 carries, 114 yards, and a touchdown against the Herd last year. And his season-long run, 52 yards, came against the Thundering Herd. Olmstead set to punt the football away with his right foot. Short snap. Just got it away. This is Bradshaw. Makes the first man miss across the 45 and up to the 47-yard line. Marshall's got the football back. We've got a flag on the play. We'll talk this one over. The penalty is against Troy. It's a motion penalty. Bob Pruitt will refuse the penalty. He'll take the ball. So the freshmen are served in this game. Here in the first half, John, we've already seen D.T. McDowell, Ahmad Bradshaw already impacting Marshall. Both of these players arrived on campus at their respective schools so late they're not in the media guide. <laughs> Bob Pruitt and the Thundering Herd, they've got the football. 11.41 to go in the first half. Troy 7, Marshall 3. Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative. One of me things. 
So Touchstone Energy is your local cooperative. In fact, it's a national network adding value and strength to your local cooperative and the local community. What's your connection to Touchstone Energy? Your friends and neighbors at your electric cooperative. Locally, they are Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative. Energy and the power of human connection. The United States won it in dramatic fashion in 99, but lost it in an upset to the Europeans in 02. Now the U.S. wants it back, and only Golf Home will be there every day, all day, all week long. The Ryder Cup. Experience it on the Golf Channel, the only network to turn on before, during, and after this year's matches for Oakland Hills. The United States, the Europeans, the Golf Channel, Ryder Cup week. Automobiles are single-handedly redefining automotive value, and Kia Atlanta South is doing whatever it takes to get you behind the wheel. Now, during Kia Fest, you can own an ultra-reliable, beautifully finished Kia for little or no money down and super low monthly payments. Kia's cross-country king, the Sorento SUV, is yours for just $289 a month or get a perfectly engineered multi-use Sedona minivan for just $259 a month. There's never been a better time to buy. We're going to make sure your experience is as great as the car you buy. Shop Kia Atlanta South during Kia Fest. Troy 7, Marshall 3, 1141 to go in the first half. Well, John Marshall's defense has, hold, has held Troy to three and outs in the Trojans' last two possessions. Now they've got the football and they've got good field position. Yeah, they certainly do, but uh, they still got to get by this guy right here, DeMarcus Ware. We talked about him at the top here. This guy, great athlete. You know, he's got one sack on the day already. Last year he had six out of the same high school, Auburn High School, as OCU Minura, who was a second-round pick for the Giants last year. And Brandon Hall, their big offensive tackle last season. Play action for Hill on first down, and he is brought down. Sacked by DeMarcus Ware. And it looks like there's a holding penalty pending against Marshall. Like on cue, we talk about Ware, and he gets his second sack of the first half. Boy, again, you can see that speed. He, they even bootlegged opposite him. He just came around the corner right there, getting away from Griffin on the outside of the tackle. Again, he didn't give up any sacks last year. And Ware's just beating him right now. Going to refuse the penalty. It'll be second down and 18. Marshall had tried to have a little bit of play action right there. It looks like they had a, they were back in the flat wide open right there, but Hill didn't have time to to get him out. Take a look at where speed coming around there. He actually fought to the inside and came out from that side and still made the tackle. Swing pass. Bradshaw made one tackler miss and he has swarmed under and he will lose a yard as he is brought down at the 38 yard line. Great pursuit by this veteran athletic Troy defense. Boy again you can see their corners really getting involved in the ball game right there as we talked earlier they, they play up on the receivers like that and they think run first and they do a good job on those swing passes marshall again you may see them try to stretch the field they started to do that a little bit at the end of the first quarter try to stretch the field a little bit and get them out of that same two-man look got a good look at Derek ansley the fifth year senior the most experienced player on the defense third and 19. hill and the pass was intended for Bradshaw. Incomplete. Bernard Davis had the coverage. And that was a great series for Troy's defense. It was a good defensive stand because they had great field position coming out of that timeout. They had, they had great field position. Marshall did right there. And Troy needed to step up and do a good job on defense. And they certainly did that. Jeff Mullins is the long snapper for Marshall. O'Connor is set to punt the football away again. Got it in good shape. A high spiraling kick that will go out of bounds. So this will be a relatively short kick. Out of bounds at the 34-yard line. How much pressure have the quarterbacks been feeling here in the first half? Where? More pressure by Troy. Hill's getting hit every time he throws the football. Well, that's the last thing Marshall wanted to see with the injuries that Stan had last year. They wanted to keep everybody off of him. So 
Uh, they're, they're fortunate so far. He's been hit pretty hard. First and ten for Troy. Uh, Troy average gained ten yards on first down. Here's Betterson. And Betterson is hit by about a half dozen green clad defenders. Officially, Kevin Atkins, the middle linebacker, will be credited with the tackle. Marcus Harrison, J.T. Rembert, also around the football. Gain of nearly two. It'll be second down and eight. Boy, and that's so important, that first down yardage you talk about there. They gained a lot on that first pass that they had right there. Helped that average out. But first down, trying to pick up some yards, putting your quarterback in a situation where he doesn't have to force the ball on third and long. Makes it a lot easier for an offensive coordinator to call plays and third and short versus third and 15. D.T. McDowell in at quarterback for Troy. And it's Betterson trying to bounce it outside. And he is brought down on another outstanding play by Deontay Wilson. Not too many one-on-one -on -one defenders will be able to drop Betterson, but Wilson just did. Well, I'll tell you what, he certainly likes to play against his Troy team. Last year, he had 12 tackles versus Troy and forced a fumble. So he really likes to see those white shirts and black helmets on the other side. He does a good job here fighting off a blocker coming in here and he's not an easy guy to take down so he does a great job right there getting him wrapped up and taking him down 12 tackles last year wilson with a the stop it's third and long tough situation for this freshman mcdowell four wide they'll go from the gun good pressure on mcdowell here's the pass intercepted pass is picked off by chris royal Royal's got a wall inside the 20, down to the 13-yard line. A 42-yard interception return for Chris Royal. Marshall unable to move the football on that Troy defense, but the herd gets a big turnover, and they're in the red zone thanks to Chris Royal's interception. Well, you talk about the difference between a senior and a freshman. Leak may not have thrown that ball right there. There wasn't a whole lot of pressure on him, I don't think, but I'll tell you what, once Marshall got the ball up here, they took it up. Their defense did a good job of transitioning and opening it up down here, but you take a look at this. Freshman had time to throw. He was getting pressured a little bit on the outside, but again, ill-advised throw right there, and maybe you don't see that with Aaron Leak in there, but Troy wants to get that new toy that they have. There's a great potential player on the field to see what he can do. You've got to put him in there and see what happens. Right there was unfortunate for Troy. He likes to play the piano in his spare time, and that was sweet music to the Marshall fans. A 42-yard interception return for Royal. On first down, though, that Troy defense is right there. Brown having a big first half for the Trojans. Boy, Marshall fans are starting to get a little bit of restless in the stands here. It's been a while since you probably heard Marshall fans booing about their offense, but right now... They're not happy with what's going on. They're not able to run the ball, but you've got to credit Troy's defense for that. This team does a great job of stuffing the run. You can see that. They want you to throw the football on them, but then again, they won't let you throw the ball short either, so you've got to try to air it out against them. Second down and nine. Hill setting up the screen beautifully. Charles inside the 10, flips one tackle. Farmer wraps him up as he reaches the seven-yard line. Again, Marshall, it looked like they had something set up right there. They had a nice screen ready to go, and they shed their block. The defense for Troy does a great job right here. You take a look at this. Screen set up. They've got some blockers out front, but watch Troy's defense. They do a good job of coming up and making the stop, and they don't miss tackles. They do a good job. They're very fundamentally sound, and Koning does a very good job with them defensively. Seven and a half minutes to go until halftime. Don't forget, we'll hear from Troy AD Johnny Williams as part of our halftime show stay tuned for that third down and four hill will operate from the shotgun mullins the tight end shifts to the power side of the formation hill good protection drag down third sack of the first half for troy it's bernard davis make that four sacks in the first half uh, take a look at this we talked about freshman mistakes from the offensive side of troy side we'll look at bradshaw right here he whiffs on this block he tries to cut him at the knees and he davis gets by take a look on the right side here you may be able to, can't really see it there, but actually their freshman Bradshaw tries to cut block versus staying high, and I think coaches will talk about that. This will be a 30-yard field of goal attempt for O'Connor, and it's good. So O'Connor, the sophomore from Knoxville, his second field goal of the first half, and Marshall pulls to within a point. 
Troy seven, Marshall six. We're back to Huntington in just a moment. Call me. Really? Uh, of course. <laughs> so, the kisser? Well, he said, I'm cutting you loose. Your student driver's going solo. Don't insure him with just anybody. Get a State Farm agent, someone who will help your teenager get the best protection and young driver discounts that get you the best price. No wonder so many families trust State Farm. Did he kiss her? on the Gem Shopping Network, featuring the original Gemstone Show. Each day, we showcase the finest in natural gemstones and jewelry with informative and educational shows. Our fully staffed jewelry department fabricates first-class jewelry on the premises with fine gemstones and fine diamond accents. Our expert gemologists travel and handpick the most beautiful gems available, which are then cut by our experienced cutters. Our hosts sell these gems live and ship them to your doorstep. Join us on the home of the original Gemstone Show, the Gem Shopping Network. Troy 7, Marshall 6, 6.48 to go in the first half. Aaron Leak will be coming back into the game at quarterback for Troy. So D.T. McDowell, after throwing that interception, the Chris Royal returned 42 yards to set up Marshall's second field goal, goes back to the bench. John Gregory, you made that transition from minor league baseball to college football. How difficult is it to do that? Well, it was a little bit different in my scenario. He, he, he just played recently out of high school, so... Uh, his experience is a little bit different than mine, but uh, I'll tell you, it is a transition, and it's excitement that you have to be able to take, take in stride. And he's a guy that uh, you know didn't didn't play very long in the minor leagues before coming back, so his transition wasn't as hard to do, I don't think. But I'll tell you, the biggest transition is from high school to playing college football. Playing Division One college football versus high school is a big difference, and you saw that on that series right there. But as good an athlete as he is, I think he's going to be able to step up and be a big help for this Trojans team. O'Connor sent that kick off deep into the end zone for another touchback. One more comment about McDowell. You know, it's it's all business when you play baseball, isn't it? I mean, that's a business once you sign that baseball contract. We talked to Coach Blakeney about that, a little bit about that yesterday, and he certainly thinks that as well. Here's Richardson. He's got the first down, and Roberto Terrell drags him down after a pickup of 13 yards. I don't know how he, can, how he can play with those dreadlocks on such a hot day here in Huntington, but he really picks them up and puts them down. A nice gainer for the fifth-year senior. Yeah, and he's, he's a little bit different in Betterson in that he's not a, so much of a power runner, but he's more of a slasher guy. He's another guy that didn't get any spring practice because of a knee injury. Two years in a row, he suffered knee injuries, and he's been able to come back. He's just a really hard worker, and they like him a lot. Two years in a row, knee injuries to each of his two knees. This is Richardson again. Bangs it over the 35 near the 36-yard line. Let's head down to the sidelines. What's up, Mark? Well, Dave, I'll tell you what. This is a big game for Troy, and it's certainly a big game for this senior running back because it was a year ago he injured that knee and had to have the surgery for a second time against Marshall. And he recalled the injury saying it was just one of those things and I got hit from the side and forced my leg to bend in an awkward way. But tonight he begins the second comeback of his career. Larry Blakeney, certainly happy to see Richard Tobacco. Since despite the two knee injuries, he still has one of the quickest bursts he's ever seen. Thanks, Mark. And there's a good example of that as Richardson takes it up near the 40-yard line. And that was an odd series of circumstances last year in the game. Kevin Atkins for Marshall went diving at Aaron Leak, fell directly on his head, had to leave the game. Once he returned to the game, his second snap back in the game, he teamed with Gladstone Coke on the hit that knocked Richardson out of the game and out for the season. Yeah, but it's nice to see him back because Troy really needs him in the office. It gives Betterson a break over there on the sidelines, and with him missing spring and has a bad back, it really changes things up. Here he comes again. Didn't see anything inside, bounced it outside. Terrell Mellett met him very solidly near the first down marker. It's going to be close. 
Again, Deontay Wilson coming up there and laying a big hit on him right there. Again, Deontay does a good job of coming up and making solid contact. He's had a great game so far. Well, Terrell has terrific speed, and he showed he can really hit. Just ask Richardson. The chain gang comes all the way across the field, and it's easily a first down. Take a look at this here. Richardson bouncing out to the outside. You talk about Terrell coming up here. He lays a big hit on him right here. He's kind of a leader on the Marshall Ooh. defense. They say this guy is a guy that's not only a leader on and off the field, he's a vocal leader to this team, too. So they like to get him involved in the game. He does a good job right here. That's a much-needed first down for Troy. Gives their defense a chance to rest. Richardson, again, up to the 49. A gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Five straight rushes for Richardson. Scores from around the Sun Belt. Auburn leading Louisiana Monroe. 31-0 in the fourth. The rest of the Sun Belt schedule is tonight. Of course, that Middle Tennessee-Florida game has already been postponed. Missouri hosting Arkansas State. North Texas at Texas should be a good game. You see the rest. Idaho at Boise State. Second down and five. Again, they stay on the ground, and they're having some success in the middle of that defensive line. This time, it's Betterson on the carry. Yeah, they're taking a page out of what Marshall tried to do, I think. They've got good rushers on the outside, and they're running right at them, trying to be physical, letting that veteran offensive line that they have out there try to open up some holes, and they're using a fullback to come up so in inside and uh, really open up for the running game. John, without Jamal Weiss, without Adrian Davis, Jonathan Goddard gone until the second half. Is that impacting Troy's play calling? Here's Lee. Pass is caught. This is Dawkins, the fullback. And he takes it in the Marshall territory. Back to that, I think it does affect it a little bit because they know they don't have the defensive linemen there to do that. And once you start running the football on the inside right there, you use some play action fake to the inside, get your fullback to the outside, and they do a good job. They don't run the fullback so much, but they certainly like to throw to their backs out of the backfield. They do it, they throw it deep with them, and they always throw it to the the sides as well well there's mark fleetwood the offensive coordinator for troy he's earning his money today it's a defensive battle seven six trojans on the move three and a half minutes to go before halftime and how huge would a touchdown be right before the half here on the road in huntington leak on a botched exchange with lee milliner yeah, things get a little bit faster when it gets down here, sort of in the red zone area. It looked like Marshall was going to come after him a little bit. Sometimes as a quarterback, you look out there and you see the defensive back starting to sneak up a little bit. And you get a little bit anxious wanting to get out from underneath the center right there with the football. So, But as a quarterback, you really never blame it on yourself. It's always the center that, uh, that messes course. up. Of course. That's your story. You've got to stick to it. Second down and 11 from the 28. Play action for Leak. Good pressure by the herd. Firing through from the corner and coming up with the tackle, Dennis Thornton. Again, Marshall does a good job of covering Richardson out of the backfield that time. If you remember last year, they threw the double pass against Marshall. It was Richardson that, that uh, went up the sideline. They threw it to him. And uh, right here, it looked like he wanted to go backside on this as well. And he was covered well. Marshall's been working hard, I think, this week, talking with the coaches about watching the backs coming out of the backfield on a swing route to the backside, and they did a good job of covering it right there. Born in Hollywood, grew up in Spotsylvania, Virginia. A big play by Thornton. It's third and 19. Here's Leak. Protection is good on the play following the sack. Going to send this one down the field. Intercepted. Pass is intercepted. Second interception of the first half for Marshall. And once again, it's Chris Royal, his second. A diving interception ends the threat by Troy. Well, I tell you what, it would have been a big score for Troy to be able to go down here and even kick a field goal in this situation. Looked like he had some time, and he's getting really happy feet. We talked about him earlier. He likes to run the football a little bit. He's got some happy feet here. He's moving around. He's shuffling. Looked like he still had some time right there. If he would have stayed in the pocket, possibly just shuffled out a little bit, he may have been able to make that throw up the field. 
First and 10 from the 18. Now Royal with two interceptions, one each of the two quarterbacks we've seen from Troy here in the first half. Mullins in motion. The handoff. And there's just nowhere to run for Earl Charles. He's able to push the pile forward across the 20, near the 21. Right there in the middle of the line for Troy. The big transfer from Georgia Tech, number 93, Alfred Malone. Alfred Malone, a big body in there, somebody that Troy just loves to have on this team. 18 starts at Georgia Tech before he transferred over here to Troy, so he's a pleasant surprise when you have to line up, when you have him to line up right beside DeMarcus Ware. He's a senior after sitting out a transfer season. He's got one year to make it count for Troy. Second and seven. This is Charles. Twitter up the middle. He's near the first down. Needed to reach the 28. Well, you take a look at Troy's defense and what they're trying to do right there. Whenever Marshall gets into a passing situation, second and long or third and long, they really take their linebackers out of the middle of the field, and sometimes they'll drop their nose tackle or their, def their defensive tackle, and they mix it up pretty well, and they drop that guy into the middle of the field to kind of take it away. The quarterback's not used to seeing that. It's kind of a different type of zone coverage. Four wide for Marshall. Trips to the left. Time now of the essence. Closing in on a minute to go first half. Marshall with two timeouts. They spread the field and hand it off inside the Bradshaw. And Troy stops it beautifully. Bob Pruitt opting not to use one of his timeouts in this situation. And let the clock run. Here's a comparison of our two quarterbacks. Leak, 71 yards passing. Remember, he got 37 of those on his first attempt to Jason Samples. Hill has started slowly. Marshall's going to run the football one more time to Bradshaw. Now, will Troy opt to use one of their timeouts? Boy, Marshall fans are not happy with that. They're not used to seeing Marshall's offense and trying to hand the football off and pick up yards, and they're used to Chad Pennington, Byron Leftwich, even Stan Hill in that particular case, throwing the ball down the football field. So these fans are really not happy with that at all. Well, the first half is going to come to an end. Larry Blakeney opted not to use one of his timeouts. And he will head back to the locker room. Troy has come into Huntington and silenced this big crowd at Joan C. Edwards Stadium. They will leave the field with a 7-6 lead on the Marshall Thundering Herd down to the sidelines in our Mark Martin. All right, thanks a lot, Dave and Larry. First of all here, uh, defensive pressure, you have to be pleased. Well, we've done, done pretty good on that side of the ball and we've got some great stops. We just have done too much for them on the other side of the ball with a couple of turnovers and passing up opportunities to score ourselves. Yeah, you get the, the big play right off the bat. I know you had to be happy with that. Well, what we see offensively here in the second half. Well, you know, we're, Leak is a little bit dinged up. We're hoping to get him feeling better. He went back in and, and got a little drive going there. And we just got to settle the young kid down if he's in there and let him let him have something to do easily. All right, Larry, a pleasure. Good luck second half. Right. Larry Blakeney, the head coach of the Trojans of Troy. They have the lead here at a place they call the Hornet's Nest down in Troy, Huntington, West Virginia. 7-6, Troy over Marshall. We're back with halftime coverage in a moment. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 7.30 Eastern for live college football as North Alabama visits Tusculum. Then stay tuned for championship boxing. Am I going to get in trouble? No, you're not going to get in trouble. I can't go to school if I'm sick. Just go to school so you can get some lunch. Then you can come home afterward. Are you an elephant? Then why are you working for Peanut? Executive Courier needs reliable drivers. We pay the highest commissions on the best rates in the city. The ideal candidate will meet the following criteria. Some experience delivering in the greater Atlanta area. Their own insured dependable vehicle. A covered pickup truck. A cargo van. A 14 to 26 foot lift gate equipped box truck. Or a tractor. A valid current Georgia driver's license with no more than two moving violations in the past three years. Call anytime. Executive Courier. 404-685-3204. Hi, I'm Jack Albertson, President of Principal Financial. For 13 years, thousands of North Georgia retirees have trusted us to protect their assets. We will show you how to minimize income taxes, eliminate capital gains tax, eliminate inheritance taxes, protect yourself from the high cost of nursing homes, and avoid probate court. 
Call 770-641-7771 for free information. Protect your future. Call now. It's halftime from Jones B. Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. The Troy Trojans lead the Marshall Thundering Herd 7-6. Dave Weekly, John Gregory high above the action in the press box. And John, an outstanding first half. We saw a lot of terrific defense. Troy, I think the big story of the first half has to be the way their defensive line has been able to get the push on Marshall's reshuffled offensive line. Yeah, and uh, I, th I think, uh, as you said, there's really no surprises. Big defensive struggle out here. Uh, they've been able to run the ball. Troy has been able to run the football, but still, 7-6 to six ball game right now, and uh, defensive struggle out there. No surprise to us at all with these two defenses. John, what do you think about the new kids on the block? The quarterback for Troy, D.T. McDowell, and Marshall's true freshman tailback, Ahmad Bradshaw. Well, I think both of them have finally got their feet wet here in college football. They both have tremendous amount of talent. You can see mistakes from both guys. Missed block by Bradshaw and D.T. McDowell throwing the interception a little bit. May have forced the ball in there when he shouldn't have, but again, these are two young guys with a lot of potential. As a coach, you want to get them in the ball game and see what they can do. Aaron Leak has the only score, a touchdown in this game, a 15-yard touchdown run on Troy's opening drive. Assess his play and Stan Hill as well. Well, uh, again, I think Stan may have struggled a little bit early in the ball game, but because he didn't have pressure. Again, you got to credit Troy's defense because they did a good job of pressuring him. Four sacks on the game right now. It's tough for any quarterback. I don't care who you are to be able to try to throw the football up there, especially against a team that's playing as well as Troy is right now. John, I don't think there's any question that one of the main topics in the Marshall locker room right now is protecting the quarterback. Four sacks in one half is unacceptable to Bob Pruitt. Yeah, I think so. And one of the things Marshall may want to try to do is try to throw the ball up the field, try to advance it a little bit more. I know the people in the stands want to hear that here. And I think for Troy, they need to do the same thing as well, too. They haven't been able to run the ball. They've, they've had some pretty good field position in that first quarter. It switched in the second quarter. They weren't able to get that field position they had. So they really haven't been able to su sustain long drives. They've made some big plays. They need to do that same thing in the second half. Well, Troy has a one-point lead here at halftime, 7-6. to six, And that's very pleasing to the athletic director of Troy University, Johnny Williams. Our Mark Martin will have a word with the AD of Troy when we return to Huntington in just a moment. In central Alabama, there is a place where tomorrow's dreams are becoming a reality. A pioneering community where technology, industry, and education converge. Troy, Alabama is home to some of the world's largest businesses in their respective industries. Troy State University is the cornerstone of our vibrant city, bringing cultural diversity to our community. Over the past decade, Troy has evolved into a hub of commerce for Central Alabama, attributed to its advanced technological infrastructure and geographical proximity. Although we share a pioneering spirit, we still hold true to our strong sense of community and family values, building upon our rich heritage. as we continue our pioneering legacy into tomorrow. Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative, one and the same. So Touchstone Energy is your local cooperative. In fact, it's a national network adding value and strength to your local cooperative and the local community. What's your connection to Touchstone Energy? Your friends and neighbors at your electric cooperative. Locally, they are Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative, energy, and the power of human connection. Over the years, a lot of universities have built buildings. Troy University built buildings, but more importantly, we built programs. And those programs haven't been restricted to the state of Alabama. Those programs have been built across this country and around the world. A student can start with us in one part of the world and complete uh, his or her education in another part. We have the brick, we have the building, we have the click through technology. And on top of that is that personal touch delivered by a quality faculty at Troy University. 
welcome you back inside Jones C. Edwards Stadium, Huntington, West Virginia. The Troy University Trojans and the Marshall University Thundering Herd close game here at halftime, 7-6 to six in favor of Troy, the respective season openers for both clubs. And it was Troy getting on the board first. Aaron Leak, a 15-yard touchdown run, and then a couple of Ian O'Connor field goals. And that's the story here as we hit the break. It is a pleasure to be joined live by the athletic director at Troy University, Johnny Williams. And, uh, this field brings back memories for you, doesn't it? Yeah, because I played football. It's about this hot. I mean, it's a good old Alabama day up here today. No, but it does. Uh, actually, last game I ever coached as a coach for Troy State was in 1993 here in this stadium. Uh, unfortunately, in the semifinals of the championship in 1AA, we lost 24 to 21. But going home that day, we knew that at some point we had to have a stadium like uh, you have here and a, a tremendous program you built around this stadium. And, and we're just very proud of Troy now to have a, to have maybe a facility that's similar to this. So we're really excited about, uh, you know, the, 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 the lesson you taught us in 93. In 1984, you've been with that program, and so you've seen many, many changes. We'll get into the changes that are about to unfold, but uh, you've seen many changes down through the years, and it's been an unbelievable stepping stone year by year and uh, season by season. I have. I came there in 1985 when, after Troy had won the national championship in 84. I was assistant football coach when we won the national championship in 87 and, and, and knew the hopes and dreams of the people that are around the program that they wanted to elevate the program to 1AA and ultimately to 1A football and, and understood their needs and wants and ambitions and I became a believer of them and, and developed passion for those projects and, and you know in, 90, in 94 we made the move to division uh, 1AA and then of course three years ago made the ultimate move to 1A and, and it's just been a tremendous experience for me to have been involved in the, the whole process and the amount of support we've gained from our uh, our fan base, our alumni, and corporate partners like Movie Gallery, who stepped forward last year with a $5 million commitment name and rights to help us finish off Movie Gallery Veterans Stadium for us to make it, uh, which we think is one of the premier facilities in the country. Uh, so that, and, but you know what? I've been telling our people, our fleet feet are just now getting planted in Division One. We are the youngest 1A program in America, and we are going to water it and watch it grow and prosper. And, and I think you see a result in this first half of the competitive nature of our coaching staff and football team. And I really believe our better days are still ahead of us, so we're yeah. really excited about it. Excuse me, the, you think about it, uh, there's still business to attend to here in the second half, but I, I know your mind has to be uh, thinking a lot about what's set to uh, take place on Thursday night there at Movie Gallery. It is, of course, next week being a short week with uh, Labor Day, having a short week too. We play on Thursday, we have Missouri coming to Troy. Deb, um, by far the most uh, important, our biggest game nationwide uh, for our program we've ever had. ESPN2 will broadcast the game. Uh, 6 o'clock Central Time next week from uh, from Troy at Movie Gallery Banner State. So uh, more hype about that as a coach. I'm sure our coaches hadn't thought much about Missouri yet. They've been focused on Marshall, but as an administrator, and I know our fans, they've looked forward to next Thursday night's game. It's almost like we're starting to put icing on the top of our cake. We've been working so hard to, to put in place. and. You know, it's just a, it's going to be a great atmosphere for college football. I encourage everyone in the region to come out. You know, there a guy was asking, said, you know, you're going to be the only game in town. I said, in town, we're going to be the only game in America that night. So uh, we're really excited about home to host the Missouri Tigers in Troy. And you probably don't want me to bring you this up, I guess, precaution-wise. You've got to be thinking about Hurricane Francis just a bit. Uh, we have been, and I hope it hurries up and moves on. But it looks like, uh, you know, they're, they're predicting eight or ten inches of rain in our area Monday and Tuesday. But... The great thing, we have Astro play surface that have drained, uh, so I, I, we don't think that the water or weather will be a factor to out, out of uh, our system, so hopefully we'll get that out of the way. Johnny, so many changes this season, the names change, and again, probably the most important, you now are a member of a conference. This team is playing for something this season, a championship and a possibility of going to a bowl. Oh, there's no doubt. When we made the decision to move to 1A, you talk about having faith. We had, we did not have the facilities for Division One, and we didn't have a conference home. So as we started our path to 1A, we had a task in front of us. We we now got the stadium, but now we have the Sun Belt as a home for our football program for this fall. All sports will join the Sun Belt in 2005. It gives our football team, you know, this game's important for them. But you know what? We got to win our conference championship and compete in the Sun Belt now because we have an opportunity to play in the Wyndham uh, New Orleans Bowl on December the 14th. And you know, the players and the coaches that we've been, I guess, five years now, kind of a in a moratorium, so to speak, uh, and not having really anything to play for except pride. And, and I, c I commend Coach Blayton and his staff for getting us through those times and periods because 
it has been difficult, but now our players and coaches have something to focus in on, and we're really excited about them in the Sun Belt and, and, uh, and what a you know, bright future that whole league has, and it's just three years old, and, and uh, we're really, uh, like I said, I can't go on and on about being a member of that league and how excited we are to be a part of it. Indeed, Troy University, it's a great success story, college football, and uh, best of luck in this 2004 season, and certainly their next Thursday evening with Missouri coming in. Well, thank you so much. Hope we have a good second half. All right, Johnny Williams, the athletic director at Troy University here at halftime. Troy and Marshall, another great success story of college football, battling it out 7-6 to six here in Huntington. We're back with more with Dave and John in a moment. There are over a hundred million households in America. Every one of them different, but they should all have two things in common, a family disaster plan and a disaster supplies kit. Make yours today with help from the Red Cross. When we come together, we become part of something bigger than us all. Bet you already knew the best time to save on a brand new vehicle is at the end of the model year. Bet you didn't know that includes the most incredible driving SUV in America. Right now at Hummer of Union City. Take $5,000 off the price of any new Hummer H2 in stock. That's right, five grand off any Hummer H2. Imagine, you'll buy the toughest looking SUV for the price of an ordinary SUV. Get to Hummer of Union City. I-85 exit 64 south of the airport and save over $5,000 on any new H2. This land has a long history of bloody battles. Many hundreds were lost. Hey, you're just mad because you're five down. Now let's play some golf. 18 holes of championship golf with lush fairways and smooth bent grass greens. Minutes from downtown Marietta. At City Club Marietta, enjoy full service amenities and a courteous, helpful staff. Take a virtual tour, then book your tee times online or call City Club Marietta. Halftime activities from Huntington, West Virginia continue. The Troy Trojans lead the Marshall Thundering Herd 7-6. to six. It's been an emotional, hard-hitting, defensive-minded game, and our second half is coming up. So what's going on back in the locker room right now for Troy? Well, for Troy, I think the coach is saying, hey, we're playing on the road. We're up here. We've got a lead right now. We've got to keep them where we are. Don't make big turnovers. Don't turn the ball, put it on the ground, let Marshall get good field position, make them work for everything. I think in the Marshall locker room, I think there's a loud Coach Pruitt in there saying, hey, defensively we're doing okay. Offensively we look terrible. We need to be able to run the football against this team. We've got to be able to throw the ball up the field. So I think he's lighting a fire under his guys right now. Well, I know as an ex-quarterback you're not going to appreciate these highlights because they're dominated by defense. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that took place in the first 30 minutes. And two interceptions for Marshall, Chris Worrell. That one coming off leak. He had a fabulous first half. He sure did. Again, uh, ill-advised throw right there, but uh, you can see right here, Marshall playing good defense. Dennis Thornton fired through for the sack. Earl Charles really didn't get rolling, but did pick up 39 yards on the ground for Marshall. You can see his strength right there. He was able to run pretty hard on that. Ahmad Bradshaw got into the action. Big story the first half. No less than four Troy sacks on beleaguered Marshall quarterback Stan Hill. And here comes the only touchdown of the first half. It came on the second offensive play for Troy. A 15-yard race by Aaron Leak into the left corner of the end zone. Ian O'Connor with two field goals, but that's all the offense Marshall has been able to muster. Our halftime activities continue from Huntington. Troy on the road holding a one-point lead at Marshall 7-6. Troy University is different in the way it views its mission. We truly have a global mission. Troy University opened programs just in the last several months in faraway places such as Mumbai, India, Hanoi, Bangkok. We're located in Malaysia, and Korea, and Japan. And now opening offices in Heidelberg, Germany to reach military personnel and civilians in Europe. My dream is for us to be able to reach out to beyond our state to serve our nation and our world and to bring that world to the state of Alabama. Hi, I'm Coach Blakeney from Troy University, and from my experience, it's tough to put a guarantee on anything. Man, if I could promise a win in every game, well, I'd be just like Movie Guy. 
Did you know that if you're not 100% satisfied with a movie or game rental, Movie Gallery will give you another absolutely free. It's called the Play On Promise, and it's Movie Gallery's guarantee that you'll have a good time. So relax, rent a day, and enjoy. Movie Gallery. Call me? Really? Uh, of course. <laughs> So, did you kiss her? You know what we said? I'm cutting you loose. Your student driver's going solo. Don't insure him with just anybody. Get a state farm agent, someone who will help your teenager get the best protection and young driver discounts that get you the best price. No wonder so many families trust State Farm. Did he kiss her? What good are unlimited minutes if they only start at night or on weekends? With Unicell's unlimited round-the-clock calling, you could make or receive calls anytime with a never-ending supply of minutes. It's totally unlimited, day or night. Just call whenever you want with Unicell's unlimited round-the-clock calling. Experience wireless the way it should be. Bring your number to Unicell today. Troy University Trojans football is brought to you by Naturally Fresh. Try preservative-free, naturally fresh dressing. AEC Touchstone, the power of human connection. The city of Troy. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Movie Gallery, where fun is just a play button away. Movie Gallery, play on. And Unicell, part of life here. Sun coming down in Huntington, West Virginia. And let's check our first half stats. Troy with a 7-6 lead on the thundering herd of Marshall. It was a first half that was dominated by defense. Marshall just 22 rushing yards. You see Troy, Greg, or er, uh, John has the, the edge in total yards. Let's send it down to Mark Martin, who's standing by with Bob Pruitt of the herd. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. Well, Bobby, first half uh, certainly had some royalty. Chris Royals comes up big there defensively for him. Well, he made a couple of really nice plays. He put us in a position to get a touchdown. We just wasn't able to punch it in. Ian did a good job with the field goal. Our young offensive line has got to do a better job of protection. They've really got two really great defensive linemen, and one kid is really wearing us out a little bit. So we've got to find a way to chip off on him in this half. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. Good luck second half. All right. All right, Bobby Pruitt, the head coach of the herd. Dave, John? All right, thanks, Mark. Now you can see the concern from Bob Pruitt. John, what stands out to you on those stats? Well, I think you look at total yards right there. It shows how, how well these defenses are playing. 77 yards for Marshall. That's not like Marshall to have 77 yards and a half, never mind even a quarter. So Troy's doing a very good job of that. You can see they have 73 yards passing the ball. They're trying to get the ball in the air, and Leak's done a pretty good job, especially in that first play, getting it up there. But the big one, four sacks for Troy. As Coach said, they're going to probably try to use their tight end, I think, a little bit in this second half to help block they're also going to use i think their back coming out of the backfield going to help try to double team those defensive ends a little bit he talked about chip blocking a little bit that's when you get that help from the deep from the uh from the running backs to help you aaron leak the quarterback of the troy trojans getting loose marshall won the toss took the opening kickoff so the trojans will get the ball first to begin the second half fans who came into marshall tonight for this game expected a college football game and a street fight has broken out and Jonathan Goddard has served his one half suspension and will give Marshall's defense a boost as he returns to his familiar defensive end position yeah, and I'm not sure I'd want to have to block this guy in this second half because he's a guy that's talented and he's got plenty of rest from sitting out in that first hour I know he's been sitting on that sidelines drooling waiting to get in this ball game so he's certainly going to help Marshall's defense shore up that front a little bit Ian O'Connor will start the third quarter by kicking off for Marshall University, and he's had a strong game. The sophomore from Knoxville has been doing a great job on the kickoffs, has two field goals up on the board. Number three in white is Adrian Gent. Troy's uniforms are all white, trimmed in red and black. O'Connor with a kick. Sends this one deep. Gent will take it at the two. Across the 10, and will well he will reach the 20-yard line, but just barely. Good special teams coverage by the Marshall Thundering Herd. 
So we'll now get a look at that Troy offense and see what kind of halftime adjustments offensive coordinator Mark Fleetwood and the Troy Brain Trust made at halftime. Well, again, I think some of the things you may want to look for is they do a good job of throwing to backs out of the backfield, throwing them up on what they call wheel routes on the outside up the sideline trying to make big plays. I guess we'll see if they can try to do that in the second half. Now, well, Leak's number is really not that outstanding, and consider this, Troy begins the second half with a one-point lead, and DeWitt Betterson only has 16 rushing yards from the eye. And this is Betterson, and he will go nowhere. And right away, it's Goddard right in the middle of things along the Marshall defensive line. Well, again, this has got to be a lift for this Marshall team, having Goddard back in there. He does a good job here of coming around from the backside. Again, he didn't, uh, didn't do much there, but the excitement of just being in there and being a part of it, after you've played the first half, you can bring a lot of emotion to a team, and it's a big lift for Marshall to have him in there. Deontay Wilson also involved on that play for Marshall defensively. No gain, second and ten. And Betterson and Leak collide in the backfield. And again, it's Goddard. And you can tell that Jonathan Goddard is all fired up. He sat out the first half via the suspension. He wants to make up for lost time. Yeah, again, you can see this time he came all the way from the backside. Last time he was part of the tackle. This time, a little mess up in the handoff right there. He was able, gave him time to come back from the backside. Wouldn't be surprised to see Troy State kind of bootleg off of that, maybe fake it the way he's penetrating right there. So, see what Troy decides to do here. Third down and long. Troy two of seven on third downs in this game. Leak controls the snap. And the pass is incomplete. It was intended for Jason Samples. Willie Smith had the coverage for Marshall. It's three and out for the Trojans on their first possession, and Marshall should get good field position. Again, Marshall had good pressure off the left side right there, again, causing Leak to kind of move his feet. And when he starts to shuffle on the outside, he's got to get his shoulders turned up the field so he can throw it to these receivers. Sometimes he wants to throw from the side. Doesn't, he's not as accurate that way. So when he gets his shoulders turned to throw up the field, he does a good job. And Marshall continues to rotate their punt returners. Emmanuel Span is back to receive the kick. Also Bradshaw, and it's a fake. Able to control the snap, and this is going to be ruled down at the six-yard line. Olmstead had to go to a knee to field that snap. And when he did, he's going to be ruled down at the six. A huge early turnaround for Marshall. Well, you talk about momentum switch right there. That's something Marshall needed. Give a little bit of life coming out of the half. You see it right here. Bad Ooh. snap. He, was, he did a good job of knocking it down. Marshall would have had a chance for a touchdown right there. Earlier in the ball game, he dropped the snap. That wasn't so bad. But this time, you got to give him credit. He actually did a pretty good job there of preventing it. Boy, hindsight's 20-20. But, John, if that ball had gone through the end zone, that might have actually been better for Troy. Marshall with a golden opportunity here to get an early touchdown. In the opening moments of the second half, Earl Charles down to the two. John Gregory, was Olmstead down? Let's take a look right here. The snap is low. He's got the ball. It looks like he has control of it right there. So uh, I would think that the referee's looking at that and saying, hey, he had control before he started to get up. Once he got up, he let go of the ball. So I think it's a very good call right there. Second down and two. Of course, Marshall plays at Ohio State next week, and they'll have uh, instant replay in effect for that game. Charles. Unable to get anything going. Fights to get back to the line of scrimmage. This year in the Big Ten, Big Ten teams and non-conference games at home will experiment with instant replay. It was in effect for the numerous non-conference matchups today involving teams from the MAC and visiting Big Ten teams. Yeah, and I think Coach Pruitt said that he's going to like that. He, uh, you go up there and you play in that environment, you want every effort, everything to be fair as you possibly could, and I think that kind of evens it out a little bit when you're up there and maybe they have Big Ten officials. Marshall had to approve that for that to happen, and they did. Third down to the end zone. The pass was intended for Josh Davis, incomplete. Contact in the end zone, no call. Davis was looking for a flag. And O'Connor will come on for the short field goal attempt. 
Marshall really trying to do everything they can, but Troy's got an answer for whatever Marshall tries to do. They went two tight ends to play before that and brought a tight end out of the backfield to try to get an extra blocker in there. They weren't able to do anything, and there they tried to spread it out, and they still couldn't put the ball in the end zone. Tough angle for O'Connor. This will be a 19-yard attempt. He's got it, and Marshall is in front for the first time today. Three Ian O'Connor field goals, and Marshall has a 9-7 lead on Troy. 12.04 to go in the third. With other nationwide plans, you're only covered if you call on their network. Step off their network and whoa, whoa! But with Unicel's true nationwide calling, there's never any roaming fees. So your minutes work everywhere your phone does, anywhere in the country. Experience wireless the way it should be. Bring your number to Unicel today. We're working hard in economic development at Troy University to foster a better, stronger economy in our state. The very economic impact study that brought Mercedes to Alabama was done in Troy, Alabama at Troy University. We have partnerships around the world, for example, with the Alabama Development Office and a shared office that we uh, now have in Heidelberg, Germany. It's important that we forge as many partnerships as we can, not only in the state, but in this country and around the world. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 7.30 Eastern for live college football as North Alabama visits Tusculum. Then stay tuned for championship boxing. Right now in your home, there's something dangerous. Kids as young as 10 sniff ordinary household products to get high. They don't know that sniffing can be fatal. Talk to your kids. If you know what they're doing, they're much less likely to sniff inhalants. Marshall in front for the first time in this game, now leading Troy 9-7, 12-04 to go in the third. How good has Troy's defense been in this game? Their defense comes up big. Marshall started that drive at the Trojan 6. Yeah, how big has it been? Actually, they've had two drives inside the opponent's 20-yard line, starting at the 13-yard line and the 6-yard line, and they only have six points. So that's how good Troy's defense has been so far tonight. Well, we expected a, a wide-open offensive game. Instead, it's really been a slugfest between two senior-dominated defenses. From the five... And Richardson takes it out to the 20-yard line. So Troy will start again. This is their second possession of the second half. Well, we talked about some of the keys for Marshall's defense, and one of those was not giving up a big play. They did that on the first play of the game, and so far they haven't been able... They've done a good job of not giving up that big play, as we talked about. Troy's known for running trick plays. I don't think it's a very good time to do it down here, but don't be surprised if Troy pulls something out and tries to do something. But as far as a trick play goes. Aaron Leak, that quarterback, we've also seen the fr true freshman, D.T. McDowell, for the Trojans from the 21. Betterson. And he has swarmed under Roger Garrett, making his first career start for Marshall with a stop. Vic Koenig, in his second season as the defensive coordinator at Troy, taking over for longtime coordinator Wayne Bolt. His unit's done a great job, John. Yeah, they have. And we talked about it at halftime a little bit amongst ourselves is Here's a guy with a head coaching experience out at Wyoming. He spends a lot of years out there, sees big-time football. He's a very good coach, knows what's going out, on out there, did a great job last year, and his defense is just stepping up and doing the same this year. Nowhere to go for Betterson. <laughs> what great tackling for him by Curtis Key. Lost his helmet, but he didn't lose his target. He drops Betterson in the backfield. They, what, they really like him. They, uh, they actually say he's the most humorous guy on this football team. He keeps the locker room loose and some things like that. And uh, he's a guy that likes to stick his helmet in, as you can see that. And uh, the type of guy they said most likely to succeed out of high school. That's how they voted this guy. Four wide for Troy. Third and 13. Marshall's got the lead and trying to build on a little momentum here in the third quarter. Leak with good protection. The pass is caught up at the 40-yard line. That's a first down, and it's Hampton. 
coming up with a clutch catch for the Trojans. Boy, again, you take a look at this. Leak gets back. When he has time to get back, he gets his feet set. He steps and throws. He does a good job. He's a lot more accurate when he gets his feet set. He does a good job of throwing on the outside, but you watch him when he gets his shoulders turned up the field. That's when he's accurate. If he starts moving to the side and throws with his shoulders facing the sideline, that's when he runs into a little bit of problem. So nice setup right there. Good drop. Nice throw. Big first down for Troy. Hampton with a nice catch. The sophomore from Tallahassee. First and 10 at the 40. Jordan Leslie in motion. Betterson got away from one tackler and then a wave of green defenders drove him to the turf. Let's send it down to Mark Martin. David John, never easy losing a valuable member of your coaching staff and one who was a good friend. That's what Larry Blakeney has experienced this preseason and in this game for the first time in his 14 years at Troy, assistant coach Mike Turk is not there. Turk left in May to become the head coach at Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama, a Division III school. Now, Dave, I know you and John are smart guys, but that's Huntington with a B. We're in Huntington with a T, West Virginia. Great, Mark. Good stuff. I, I, all except the part about John and I really being smart. Second down and nine. Leak throws off his back foot and just sails this one into the Marshall bench. I think it was a good choice right there. He was he was well covered. Marshall did a good job of covering back out of the backfield. He had nowhere to throw that, and uh, he just got rid of it right there. So sometimes you have to give the credit defense and take what they give you. At that particular time, he did that. Leak, four of 11, 93 yards, one interception. Chris Royal of Marshall has two interceptions on this game. He picked off a pass from D.T. McDowell in the second quarter. Third down and nine. Leak was able to connect with Hampton on the last third and long. What will happen this time? Corner blitz. Oh, Leak with a super move into Marshall territory. Takes a huge hit, but picks up the first down at the 47-yard line. Curtis Keith lowered the boom. Marshall went into man coverage right here, and once you do that and you miss this sack, as far as the backer coming in there, it's wide open field because the defensive backs and linebackers are chasing their guys all over the field, man to man. I don't know if it's necessary to get up and dance after you give up a 15-yard play like that, but uh, big play by Leak right there using his feet. Well, Leak on this drive converted a third and long with an arm and then used his feet that time on the scramble in the Marshall territory. Play action for Leak. Gonna send this one down. The pass is caught at the Marshall 26-yard line. James Earl Cray was able to outleap Roberto Terrell for the football. Take a good look at this again. You can see right here, Mark Fleetwood does a good job. If they're gonna play man coverage on that, what you wanna do is put your guy up against a guy that's five foot eight on the outside right there. Man-to-man -man coverage, throw it up there. Let him go after it and make some plays. This Cray guy, he's a guy that fifth in the uh, high school in a 200 meter as a junior out of high school. He's a guy with plenty of speed, so want to give him an opportunity to get the ball in his hand. Cray, a 23-yard reception. Betterson, oh, the Mets solidly by Jameis Martin in the backfield. Martin, first team all Mac. Really put it on him right there. He's a Bronco Nagurski candidate this year. This guy likes to put the lumber to you, and he can lay it on you. Well, Jameis Martin, among the most vocal of the, the Marshall players prior to this game, talking about Troy, felt that last year after winning at Kansas State, they overlooked Troy. Well, Martin and his teammates are definitely in a battle with the Trojans tonight. Second and 11, play action for Lee. Pass behind his intended target. Tried to slip it to the tight end, Jordan Leslie, incomplete. You know, you talk about uh, Troy State coming in, or Troy, I'm sorry, coming in here to this ball game. And Coach Pruitt said, hey, this is the best team that he thinks coming into this stadium to play, including some of the Mac schools that have been in here that have played in bowl games. So he gives a lot of credit to this team, a lot of credit to this coach right here for bringing in a fine football team. Big play here in this drive, third and 11. The line of scrimmage is the 26. This would be a 43-yard field goal from this distance. Leak from the gun, looking for another third down conversion. The pass too tall. A flag is down. The pass is intended for Cray. Yeah. 
The call will go against the Trojans. They get a receiver out there, gets a little bit anxious when he knows the ball possibly be coming to him. They get the call to his side right there, and he takes off a little bit early. Marshall will refuse the penalty. It'll be fourth down and 12 from the 26. Here's Olmstead with a chance to regain the lead for Troy. A 43-yard field goal from the right hash. Snap is good. The ball is down. And the kick is good. A 43-yard field goal. And now a late flag comes in. A 43-yard field goal by Thomas Olmstead, and Troy has regained the lead. I think this is a dead ball foul, so the points will stay on the board. Olmstead with a clutch kick from 43 yards. Troy back in front by a point at 10-9. Here's the call. Personal foul on Jameis Martin. 7.57 to go in the third quarter. Larry Blakeney and Troy University. The Trojans back in front at Marshall. 10-9. Call me? Really? Uh, of course. <laughs> so, did you kiss her? What we said? I'm cutting you loose. Your student driver's going solo. Don't insure him with just anybody. Get a State Farm agent, someone who will help your teenager get the best protection and young driver discounts that get you the best price. No wonder so many families trust State Farm. Did he kiss her? Now this should be our new car. Mmm, this makes more sense. Yeah, but this one's so cool. This one did better in crash tests. Yeah, but this one is so cool. This one gets better mileage. Yeah, but look how cool this is. This one comes with a longer warranty. Can we switch seats? BHs.com, roadmap to the automotive world. Now isn't this cool? It's Toyota time. The national clearance event at number one Atlanta Toyota. Oh, four Tundras and Tacomas from just $179 a month. $179. It's Toyota time, and you've got to act now at number one Atlanta Toyota, where it's all about price and you. The one you crave is back. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. Warm cheddar cheese sauce and mushrooms, plus hickory smoked bacon. It was worth the wait, so go ahead. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. It's better here, and our pickup window is open till midnight or later. Nine, Troy leads Marshall. 7.57 to go in the third. Ian O'Connor on the right with three field goals for Marshall. Thomas Olmstead just kicked a clutch 43-yard field goal to put the Trojans back in front. So the kickers have played a huge role in this one to this point. Olmstead will kick from the 50 following the personal foul on Jameis Martin of the Thundering Herd. There's a 15-yard penalty. Shoots that one through the end zone. 11 plays, 52 yards, just over four minutes. Olmstead culminated it with a 43-yard field goal for Marshall. That who trailed 7-6 at halftime, now down by one point again at 10-9. Early in the week, Coach Pruitt talked about at his press conference that uh, they've got five high school state sprint champions as wide receivers on this Marshall offense. I think he may be interested in trying to get these guys up the field and see what, if they can stretch out this defense. We talked about it earlier. They have not been able to do it against this Troy team. Mullins in motion fake to Charles. Here's Hill going long. And Davis cut off his route at the 40-yard line incomplete. 
Marshall's been running that play inside, running that football. They bootlegged off outside of it a little bit that time. They crossed up between Davis and Hill on that. Davis hooked up on that, and Hill decided to throw the ball long. Those two need to get on the same page. They've got a lot of touchdowns together, so it surprises me that they kind of get a little bit confused there. Troy has come to Huntington and held Marshall to 80 total yards in two and a half quarters. Not too many teams can make that claim. Jesse Sato, the center for Marshall, was a little late on snapping the football. And this will cost Marshall five. Bob Pruitt mentioned earlier this week, John, that it looks like the shuffling of offensive linemen for the herd could be something that they, it may be an ongoing process through the rest of the season between Griffin, Ligurski, Sato, Bullock, and Elsis, who started this game. But Ryan Baines is an option. Yeah, he called it a work in progress, actually. So uh, it is a work in progress, and we'll see which way they go with it later on in the year. Second and 15. Fifth sack. Ball picked up by Sullivan. And he still on his feet for the moment and then finally wrestled down at the 11. That is going to be worth a fumble. Fifth sack. Hill fumbled the football. And Sullivan came up with a huge recovery for Troy. Boy, Hill had nowhere to go with the football right here. You see him try to dodge this rush right here. Wasn't able to loot it. And they do a good job here. Again, just piling it to the ground. And I don't, I don't think Stan thought he fumbled that ball, but... Uh, I'll tell you, they do a great job here of coming inside, just hitting them right in the chest, knocking it down. Third sack for Ware. And Sullivan makes the fumble recovery. A golden opportunity here to add to the lead. Boy, those two have just had an all-star performance here tonight. Leak, play action, the pass, caught, end zone. Out of bounds at the one yard line swing pass to Dawkins and he nearly scored it yeah they do that they, they like to throw to their backs out of the backfield right there and faking it inside when you have a good running game you can use some play action right there he gets his shoulders turned up the field a little bit as he's working outside makes a nice accurate throw and gives him a chance to get into the end zone first and goal from inside Marshall's one yard line for Troy power eye over the top, Betterson, touchdown, Troy. Up over the top, DeWitt Betterson. And Troy is able to cash in the Stan Hill fumble for a touchdown. Take a look at this, it's just straight over the top. Once you cross that goal line, they call it a touchdown right there, so. Marshall fans thinking it's a fumble, but once you cross that goal line, it's, it counts. And the extra point is good. Troy now with their largest lead of the game. 7.33 to go in the third. Trojan 17, Marshall 9. where tomorrow's dreams are becoming a reality. A pioneering community where technology, industry, and education converge. Troy, Alabama is home to some of the world's largest businesses in their respective industries. Troy State University is the cornerstone of our vibrant city, bringing cultural diversity to our community. Over the past decades, Troy has evolved into a hub of commerce for Central Alabama, attributed to its advanced technological infrastructure and geographical proximity. Although we share a pioneering spirit, we still hold true to our strong sense of community and family values, building upon our rich heritage. Come, experience Troy, Alabama, as we continue our pioneering legacy into tomorrow. Tonight on
on CSS. Tune in at 7.30 Eastern for live college football as North Alabama visits Tusculum. Then stay tuned for championship boxing. defensive-minded game, John Gregory, an eight-point lead right now looks huge. <laughs> On the return, Ahmad Bradshaw takes it up to the 27-yard line. That's where the Thundering Herd will start first and ten, now trailing by eight. Defensive tackle coach Ricky Logo right there has got to be happy the way his defensive tackles are playing so far. They've done a good job of stuffing the run. And Mike Pelton also has to be happy. He's the defensive end coach, and he's got two guys out there that can make you an all-American coach for you. It's nice to have those guys lining up for you out there. Makes your job a lot easier. And Mike Pelton, one of four ties to Auburn now on this coaching staff at Troy with the addition of Shane Watson and James Joseph, the former War Eagle running back this year. First and 10 from the 27. Earl Charles knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line, gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. And this has been a real hit parade tonight for the Troy defense. They have lived in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Earl Charles shut down. You know, this is going to look real interesting when the Missouri coaches start breaking down this tape of the kind of performance Troy has put together tonight. Marshall, not too many rushing yards. Second and eight. Still trying to get the rushing game going. Nowhere to go for Charles. Boy, it really surprises me that Marshall continues to try to run the football up inside there when they have the speed on the outside with these receivers. They haven't been able to sustain a drive entirely up the field. And you kind of get to the point where you question, hey, why aren't we throwing the football up the field? If we're going to make a mistake, at least try to make it deep. We haven't been able to slowly march up the field. So, hey, let's try to maybe take it in chunks and see what happens that direction. Ronald Harper made the stop, and Tory Lankford, 91 in the middle. Been sharing time at the nose with Eric Thomas tonight. Just got the playoff. Hill. The pass is incomplete. Tried to get Earl Charles up at the 40-yard line. Marshall's going to have to punt the football. <laughs> and uh, what a job Troy's done tonight defensively against the Marshall run attack. This is a Marshall team that led the Mac in rushing last year. Tonight, 20 yards on the ground. O'Connor on the punt. Falk back at the Troy 30. Line drive kick from the 27. Still on his feet. Oh, a fine open field tackle at the 32-yard line. Curtis Keyes, another big hit. He's been all over the field defensively for Marshall tonight. Well, we tell you, Coach Blakeman has got to be happy with what's going on right now. Big 17-9 lead right here. Couldn't ask for more. You're playing on the road, and what, you do, what you've done is you've taken that senior team that you, we talked about at the beginning of this game. We said it was the key to this game to have these seniors be able to come in here. This is a quiet Marshall crowd. The seniors have done a great job, and everybody for that matter for Troy, of quieting this place down and being able to play in a pressure situation. Betterson will get a break as Richardson returns to the game and gets the handoff for Troy and fires through to the 39-yard line. That's a good surge. 
A gain of nearly six on first down. And now time continuing to uh, come off the clock, closing in on six minutes to go in the third. Marshall at home, its home opener, without a touchdown tonight to this point. Now, if you like a defensive struggle, this is certainly a ball game to watch. If you like kickers scoring points, again, it's a ball game to watch. Leak to Richardson. And is stopped at the 40-yard line. Give him forward progress just across the 40. And it'll be third down and along two. Tell you, look at the linebacker crew from Marshall right here. Atkins had a shoulder problem here in the preseason. Didn't get a lot of work along with all of their linebackers. All of them missed a little bit of time here in the preseason. Nicked up a little bit. Broken hand, bad shoulder, different things like that. So you wonder if that's going to take a toll on him. And Leak gobbled up by the turf. Well, you can see Troy setting it up right there. He got tangled up with Richardson, but that's exactly what they were going to do was play fake that, roll out, and try to hit Richardson coming back off the backside. Marshall had a defender there, but that's what we were talking about earlier in the game. They like to hit their back coming off the backside right there. They just happen to get tangled up. Well, Johnny, we're talking about those Marshall linebackers, J.T. Rembert, Kevin Atkins, Deontay Wilson, because of injuries in fall camp. All three of them were not on the field together at practice until earlier this week. And when you're talking about linebackers, you're talking about leaders on defense, and it makes it Punt is blocked. Punt is blocked. Marshall's got the football at the Troy 38. So with all the lack accolades we've been pouring on the Troy defense, their punt game here in the second half has left a lot to be desired. Boy, I tell you, that situation in special teams in the first game of the year can cost you all the time. Brad Bates. Bates comes in here, does a good job, lays out in front of the foot. We'll take another look right here. They teach you to come out in front of it. Don't attack the punter that's up. Go out in front. They do a good job here. Again, Marshall's had tremendous field position all the time. You see this block punt. Again, they're starting inside Troy's territory. They've got to drive at the 13, the 6, and come up with 6 points. So we got to see this happen. Take a look at Brad Bates right there. From the 38, Hill on the play action. Going to go long. The pass is incomplete. A flag. The Palace. This is going to be a, a penalty. Looks like it's going to be against Marshall. Wow, a takedown <laughs> right in the middle of the line. No call. That's a break for Marshall. Second down and 10 from the 38. Again. Where put, I don't know how many hits Hill can take like that. He's had so many quarterback hurries today. He hasn't been able to get the ball down the field at all. Where just continues to come after him. Davis to the right. Hill from the gun. Davis has it. He's inside the 20 down to the 18 for a first down. That's a gain of 20. So Davis comes up with a big play for Marshall. And the Thundering Herd has really had a tough time moving the ball. You take a look right here. Marshall trying to do a good job of chip blocking. Ware has been able to get at him. This time they used a, they used a black to uh, back to get off there and chip block him and not, uh, not allow him to get in there at the quarterback. From the 18, Charles spins his way down near the 11 for a gain of seven. Finally finding a little bit of running room off the right side is the senior from Brooklyn, New York. Marshall's tackle coming off right there. Transfer from Miami of Ohio. Maybe banged up a little bit. We'll have to watch the right tackle, see what happens here. John Inman now in the game. Two tight ends shift to the left. And they're going left with Charles inside the 10. And he appears to have the first down. Boy, Charles was following 
Toby Bullock around the left side right there. Looked like he had a wide opening to get in there. Take a look at a big, big offensive lineman coming out here. He's looking up the field. He's got to get up the field and try to find somebody. He looks like he whiffed on two guys, had an opportunity to maybe get a big knockdown right here. Charles was trying to push him a little bit, so. Well, Bullock's listed at 340. I asked him about his weight earlier this week, and he just laughed. He's got to be closer to 360. Big challenge for the Troy D. Charles trying to get wide, and it's just absolutely stuffed by DeMarcus Ware. Boy, Charlie stepped up all night long in this situation when they've been inside the 10-yard line. Same thing right here. The penetration's so good, Marshall can't even get to the outside. Watch the penetration you see from Troy right here. Earl Charles has nowhere to run. They're filling hard from the corners on the outside. And with Hill's injury, you just they just don't bootleg off of it like they used to and doesn't give them an opportunity to get outside and make some plays. This game tonight's just been an absolute highlight film for DeMarcus Ware. He has been everywhere for the Trojans. And this could come back to hurt the Thundering Herd. Stan Hill has to burn a timeout. Second down and goal at the 10. Now Brad Bates put Marshall in great position to start this drive with the block to the Thomas Olmstead punt. Let's head down to the sidelines. What's up, Mark? Well, since becoming the head coach, Marshall, in 1996, Bobby Pruitt has had the luxury of three quarterbacks moving on to the NFL. Eric Presser led Marshall to a perfect record of one AA national title in 1996. Pruitt's first year on the job. Then Chad Pennington guided the program to Division 1A and three straight bowl games. He was followed by Byron Leftwich and three more bowl games. As most of us know, Leftwich, the starting quarterback at Jacksonville, Pennington, with the New York Jets and a great big contract this week. Pruitt feels Stan Hill has all the makings to be an NFL player. Last year he missed all but six games with the ACL and still threw for over 1,700 yards and 15 touchdowns. His passing efficiency rating was second nationally before he went down. Thanks, Mark. Yards per game tonight, 103, just less than 25% of their average total from last year. Following the timeout, second and goal from the 10. Here's Hill. Protection's good. To the end zone. Touchdown, Josh Davis. Well, you talk about, he was just talking about Stan Hill and his opportunity to possibly play in the NFL. If you give this guy the opportunity and the time to throw the football, he's as accurate as I've seen of any quarterback. He does a good job here setting in the pocket. He throws it to his veteran receiver, Davis. Marshall finally gets a score on the board. But, gosh, you got to give credit to Troy defense for holding all night long. You can't expect them to do that every time you get a turnover down there in this territory. Well, it's 17-15 with a minute 52 to go in the third. You can see Marshall, two-point conversions last season, one for three. A successful two-point conversion here would tie the game at 17. Marshall going for two after their first touchdown of the 2004 season. Four wide receivers. Trips to the right. Hill across the middle. Passes tipped. Incomplete. Two-point attempt. No good. Troy 17. Marshall 15. Here's the last play right here, the two-point play trying to come in. Johnny Falk comes out from the outside with a corner blitz and doesn't give him the time to throw. Stan had plenty of time to throw, but they they were able to get him. Here, he has plenty of time to throw, and Davis, he's been in the end zone many times before, and when they have time to hook up with that connection, usually they're pretty good at it. Take one more look at this. Stan steps back. He looks at the receiver the whole way right there. But a lot of times he looks like he's looking at him and he may be looking at a defensive back or a linebacker trying to hold him in his spot. But again, when you have that combination, they've been there many times before. And Marshall finally gets a touchdown right there on a nice six-play scoring drive. 
Well, after the blocked punt by Brad Bates, Marshall, six plays, 38 yards on the scoring drive that took a little less than two and a half minutes. Hill to, to Josh Davis, covering the last 10 yards for the score. Marshall's two-point conversion attempt, no good. So Marshall cuts an eight-point lead to two, but the Trojans still leading 17-15. Blakeney's been through some wars, wouldn't you say? He certainly has. He's been to a lot of big-time places. He knows he's in a big game here, too. There's Richardson popping through. And as O'Connor got him and hog-tied him down at the 24. And he's feeling it. Boy, look at the look on his face right there. Here's a guy that gets no time to practice in tackling anybody and looks like he's hurting a little bit and I'll tell you what Marshall doesn't want that to happen right now he could be the most valuable player on this team as far as tonight goes other scores UVA romps at Temple South Carolina wins at Vanderbilt many of our viewers tonight will see the next broadcast Troy at South Carolina September 25th Rutgers leading Michigan State Ohio State pulls away from Cincinnati Lake on first down Troy keeps it on the ground Richardson short carry and here's O'Connor and this is a big concern for Marshall on the sideline yeah taking a look at this play right here here's Richardson breaking out to the outside O'Connor just sticks his head in there does a great job actually it's a great tackle for a kicker right there but uh, I'll tell you they're not used to that contact and uh, he's on the sideline in a little bit of pain and Marshall can't afford to have him out he does the kicking and the punting for this team so he's very valuable Second down and eight, leak on the play action. Pass, Samples made the catch, broke a tackle. And he's into Marshall territory at the 48. 25 yard gain. Second huge gain of the night for Jason Samples. Samples, this guy, we talked about him earlier. Preseason, all Sun Belt Conference. You watched him go up after this ball. He's got catches in 32 of the 35 games he had coming into this. So he's the go-to guy for this football team. No question about that. First and 10 for the Trojans at the Marshall 48. Leak now 7 of 16 for 151 yards tonight. We're inside the final minute of the third quarter. Nowhere to go for Richardson. Again, it's Deontay Wilson for Marshall. Boy, Deontay's had the type of game that Ware's had for Troy on that side of the football. He's really been laying the hits on people tonight. I think Richardson saw him coming right there and was trying to get down, but uh, Wilson really laid it on him there. Loss of a half yard. Fans on their feet. Leak to throw. Pass too high. Whoa, what a huge hit. And a flag comes in. Curtis Keyes with a huge hit, and it's going to draw a flag. Yeah. yeah, Keyes is beating his chest, but they're going to call a penalty on him for going after the head. And he really went high on this. It's a tough call for a guy. He's going after him, trying to make an aggressive hit, but I think they're also, they may get him for unsportsmanlike conduct after that, the way he was dancing around. We talked about him doing it earlier tonight, and again, same situation right here. So we could be looking at two penalties, and Jamal Smith bounced right back up. Dead ball foul, personal foul. Take a look at this. You really don't like to see this no matter what team you're, oh, you're cheering for. He did go very high right there. Hit him in the mouth. It looks like he actually jumped up in the air to go after him right there and cut his lip pretty good right there. It looks like. Hope he's okay over there on the sideline. Took a big time shot and it moves the football to the Marshall 32. Well, actually, Keyes was lucky they didn't call two personal fouls. It's one thing to make a big hit like that. It's another thing to dance around and celebrate when it's uh, possibly hurt somebody. 
And Leak's got to call a timeout. Troy was not in the right formation. And they had to burn a timeout. Uh, Marshall fans are calling. They thought that wasn't the correct call to make on that, but uh, may have brought some life to the fans a little bit that have been a little bit quiet, so it'll be interesting to see if it picks up the defense at all from Marshall's standpoint. When Smith continues to get medical attention, that was just a vicious shot by Keyes. Both teams now with two timeouts. Clock stops, 22 seconds. Troy led Marshall 7-6 at halftime. And this has been an explosive third quarter filled with big plays. The Trojans now lead 17-15. There's a look at Keyes right there. Still feels like he's a guy that's hustling around. I mean, sometimes you get in that situation, you know, it looked really bad and everything like that. You get in the emotion of a ball game. It's really difficult. You're trying to lay the best hit on somebody. He went a little bit high right there. He may learn from that, but still, he went after him hard. I mean, you, you can't fault him for doing that. I'm faulting him for dancing around afterwards. That's really unnecessary. First down and 10 from the 32. Three wide, two to the right from the shotgun. Leak flips it out to Betterson. Betterson dropped the football. And Leak was lucky to get back on it, back at the 42. They tried to set up a screen right there. It looks like they had it. They allowed Marshall's rush to, co rush to come in there pretty strong. They did a good job of sitting back there. You watch the quarterback take a step back, let the rush come to him, and then dump it off. Atkins does a good job out there of stopping that, makes them change direction, lets the pursuit from the inside come out, and let all his friends help him. So they were, Troy was lucky to be able to jump on that football. Leak did a good job of jumping on top of it. And we have come to the end of the third quarter. Emotions are running high in Huntington. This has turned out to be a street fight between Troy and Marshall. Heading to the fourth, the Trojans lead the herd 17-15. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 7.30 Eastern for live college football as North Alabama visits Tusculum. Then stay tuned for championship boxing. Thursday night is Alabama night on CSS. Tune in at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central for the Mike Shula Show. Then stay tuned for the encore presentation of the Alabama-Utah State Game. CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Hello. Mrs. Anderson, this is Mark Brown. I'm from the collections department of... Hi. Listen, I'm sorry I haven't made my payment yet. I'll, I'll get it in as soon as I can. Maybe you should call in charge. They'll work with you and come up with a solution that's right for you. Then why can't do a little more than you can manage? Call in charge debt solutions. We're a nonprofit company that puts people back in control by helping them manage their debt. We'll stop the collection calls and we'll help lower your interest rates so you'll have one affordable monthly payment. Call in charge today. The one you crave is back. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. Warm cheddar cheese sauce and mushrooms plus hickory smoked bacon. It was worth the wait, so go ahead. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. It's better here. And our pickup window is open till midnight or later. It's Toyota time. The national clearance event at number one Atlanta Toyota. Oh, four Tundras and Tacomas from just $179 a month. $179. It's Toyota time, and you've got to act now at number one Atlanta Toyota, where it's all about price and you. Troy 17, Marshall 15, start of the fourth. Jamal Smith, who took that shot to the helmet moments ago by Curtis Keyes, has left the field and has gone back to the Troy locker room. Troy now with the ball in Marshall territory, but facing second down and 19 at the 42. John, one more look at it. Yeah, you look at this, the defensive back for Marshall kind of grabbing him and pulling him down a little bit. Keyes went after him like he was going to... Try to hit him in the chest, and unfortunately, he went after and hit him in the head. Again, I don't fault him for hitting him in the head like that. Things like that happen out on the field, especially as quick as things are happening. It's the dancing after, as we talked about. But very unfortunate for both teams there. Four wide for Troy. Leak feels the heat, got the pass off, threw it behind his intended receiver. Richardson incomplete. It'll be third and long. 
Marshall gets some penetration right there and gets an arm on Leak as he's trying to get rid of that ball and kind of changes the flight of the ball a little bit. So big third down play for Marshall's defense right here. If they can hold him here, we got a whole quarter to play. The way things have been going tonight, you never know <laughs> what's going to happen in this fourth quarter. What a way to start the season. Well, we talked about it coming in. These two teams are like, it's almost like a conference rivalry between these two teams. Here's Leak, third and long. Gets the ball out to Richardson. Makes one move, and then is slapped to the turf by Deontay Wilson at the 34. Down to Mark Martin for an injury update on Jamal Smith. Well, Dave, I just saw Jamal, and he was coming off the field, and they were telling him they were going to have to stitch it up. A pretty nice little gash there uh, below the upper lower lip, and uh, it was much to his chagrin. He did not want to go into the locker room. Also, Clint Coe, their free safety, redshirt freshman, he had to be taken into the locker room. Just a little dehydration trying to get him ready to go. And it looks like Marshall punter and kicker Ian O'Connor is okay. We should see him back in there, guys. Olmstead sends this one down the field and into the end zone. 34 yards, no return. Marshall will have the football at the 20-yard line. Lots of excitement still to come tonight from Huntington. The herd has the ball when we return. Troy 17, Marshall 15. saved through services provided by the Red Cross, blood drives, disaster relief efforts, providing food and clothing, first aid, CPR, and AED classes. And all of this is made possible by donations from people like you. To offer your financial support, please contact your local American Red Cross chapter today. Welcome back to Huntington. 14-11 to go in regulation. Troy with a two-point lead. Marshall kicker, putter, field goal specialist Ian O'Connor back up. Looks like he'll be able to continue in this game. John, let's revisit our keys to the game, and we'll begin with the herd. Well, we talked about a balanced attack on offense for Marshall. Well, it's been balanced, but there hasn't been any yards. They haven't been able to run the football, and they haven't been able to throw the football against a very good Troy team. So they've been balanced, but not the way they really wanted to be. They've been able to do a pretty good job of slowing Troy's run. You know that's their bread and butter. Troy's coming in this ball game. So, and uh, Marshall has given and taken some gifts tonight. Both teams are really doing, having some turnovers or giving teams gifts down in their own territory, but still not a lot of score. Marshall going with an H back this time. And the swing pass out to the freshman span. He can't hold it. And it's an incomplete pass, second down and 10. Span, who originally committed to Wisconsin. A lot of talent, and it takes uh, an immensely talented young receiver to break into the starting lineup as a true freshman here at Marshall, and he has done just that. But he, that was a pass, he'll tell you, he should have had. It's a kind of a, they talk about miracle, this kid's even playing at 10 years old. He was hit by a car. They said he may never play sports again in his life, so... To see him out here playing Division I football, great story. Second down and 10. Hill from the gun. Here comes the rush. Earl Charles. And that is a fine open field tackle by Arthur Adams. Arthur Adams, who shares time at the weak side linebacker spot with Bernard Davis, comes up with a huge open field tackle. Yeah, he's a guy with a lot of speed. He moved from safety to outside linebacker to the weak side like that. He's a guy 5'8", 210 pounds, and, you know, you talk about a linebacker, 5'8". 
three fumble recoveries last year in one game versus Utah State. Set a team record doing that last year. Third and 11. Hill, 12 of 24 with an interception. Here's a pass to Davis. He's got it. He's got the first down up at the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 19, and it moves the chains for Marshall. Right there again, Hill had time to throw the football, and they're really starting to get on the same page. They're kind of hooking up right there. Troy's leaving a, somebody in the center of the field, kind of what you call a robber coverage. You can see him right there, and they do a good job of just kind of hooking up rather than running across the middle. A lot of times, kind of like playing out in the street, you say, hey, don't run by that car that's sitting out there. Just get beside it and stay there. That's exactly what they did. Play action to Charles. Here's Hill. And the pass is batted down by DeMarcus Ware. Boy, not only does Ware get to the passer, he's just got an uncommon knack for getting his hands up and batting passes down. He and Sullivan have had big nights doing that for Troy. Yeah, again, we talked about, about Mike's health, and that's a lot of that is from practice and coaches saying, hey, we can't get to the quarterback, get your hands in there, and you got to give credit to this coaching staff for Troy to be able to teach these guys to do that, and especially in a situation like that. Sometimes these guys are so tired from bull rushing all day long, the best thing they can do is get their hands up in the air to help out. Hill tries to avoid the rush and is swarmed under. Back at the 30. Sack number six. Eric Thomas gets credit for that sack. Thomas, big, strong guy in here, just bull rushes through there. Guy benches 500 pounds, second, second highest amount on the team. So you talk about strength. When you have a, have a guy benching 500 pounds coming up through there, I don't care how big you are, Toby Bullock or anybody else, that's very difficult to stop a guy when he wants to bull rush there with that strength. Hill, 103 yards passing, a touchdown and an interception. Josh Davis tonight, six catches, 79 yards, and a score. Just got it off ahead of the play clock. Hill steps up, still on his feet, and is brought down at the 28. And Hill starting to feel some of the frustration. Johnson brought him down, and Marshall will have to punt. Yeah, you can see Stan getting a, a lot frustrated here with this offensive line giving up all these sacks and things, and he just doesn't have anywhere to go with the football. And you can see him talking to his offensive lineman, not so much talking with him, but uh, giving him a good yelling right there. And sometimes that's what it takes from a senior that's a leader on there, but you also have to watch out who you're talking with on that offensive line. O'Connor sends this one down the field. No fair catch for Falk, and he is dropped at the 35. Marshall has won 20 straight home openers, but they are trailing with a little over 11 minutes to go in the fourth. Troy 17, Marshall 15. One you crave is back. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. Warm cheddar cheese sauce and mushrooms plus hickory smoked bacon. It was worth the wait, but go ahead. Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. It's better here. And our pickup window is open till midnight or later. Every 04 model has got to go, and that's no bull. Harrington Blunt Ford comes through with rock bottom clearance prices on all remaining 04 model Fords. You'll get the best price and award winning service, and that's no bull. You know that Ford truck or SUV you just got to have? We got it. Every color, every configuration. You'll get the best deals of the year right now, and that's no bull. Harrington Club Ford on Highway 316 in Lawrenceville. It's Toyota time. The national clearance event at number one Atlanta Toyota. Oh, four Tundras and Tacomas from just $179 a month. $179. It's Toyota time, and you've got to act now at number one Atlanta Toyota, where it's all about price and you. 
Troy's got a two-point lead and the ball and a desire to win championships. Right, Mark Martin? Right, Dave. They've won 13 conference titles in football history there at Troy. 1939, they won the Alabama Intercollegiate Conference. 1971, the Gulf South. That was in the second season of both those conferences. And then in 1996, they win the Southland in their first season in that league. So this is their first year in the Sun Belt Conference. They want to play for championships at Troy, just like they've been doing here at Marshall university so well through the years all right mark thanks a lot and now as a member of the Sun Belt conference troy gets an opportunity to go to a bowl game and that would be a first in school history richardson is stuffed in the backfield now larry blakeney has been around this program delivering it from ncaa division two to one double a to one a independent and now one a member of the Sun Belt in his 14th season Played at Auburn. And this has been a battle royale tonight. Second and 13. Make it 14. Leak caught by Samples. And he is brought down at the 40-yard line. A gain of seven. It'll be third down and six. Boy, again, just get the ball in the Samples' hands. This is a guy that makes big plays. If they're going to try to get it to a wide receiver that's made things happen for Troy in the past, this is the guy to throw the ball to. I'll tell you, he's got great hands, great speed. Wow. Check those rushing yards in the second half. Now, we've talked a lot about Troy's defense. Got to give a lot of credit to Marshall's defense as well. They've done a great job of stuffing a very good running football team samples three catches 71 yards and leak is able to convert for the first down pass caught by cray who's been a factor tonight in the passing game for troy here's a replay take a look at this again nice three-step drop back there quick throw Terrell was right on him here, a little fake in the inside, and he sets his feet. When he sets his feet and throws, he's got a real strong, accurate arm. Troy does a good job of getting him set up in that situation. Now Leak, 50%, 11 to 22, 168 yards, one interception, has run for a touchdown and thrown a pick. Here's Leak to the end zone, incomplete. Trying to go long, Terrell was able to knock the ball away from the intended receiver, Martin Keel. Tell you what, take a look at this. He just drops his football. I think he's well covered, but it hits him right in the hands. Ooh. As a quarterback, you really want your receiver to be able to come down with this play. Marshall may have gotten their hand in here, right? And was pulling on it, but uh, it, when you hit it, hit you in the hands like that, you certainly want to hold on to it, and make a big play for your team. Keel can really jump too. Six foot five, 39 and a half inch vertical jump. He's the team leader. We talked about where this guy leads the team in vertical jump, and he's six foot five. He's a guy, get it down by the end zone. You may want to look at throwing the ball up in the air too. Well, there you see the frustration from Larry Blakeney as Troy has to burn a timeout. Now, with 9.36 to go in regulation, they only have one timeout remaining. Well, this is just the beginning of a very challenging schedule. Next Thursday night at Movie Gallery Stadium should be a packed house to see Troy entertain the Missouri Tigers of the Big 12. At New Mexico State on the 18th, in Columbia to take on the South Carolina Gamecocks on September 25th. Many of you watching our game tonight will be able to see that broadcast on the 25th of September and then Utah State on October 2nd. Worth noting, John, that Troy does not play North Texas in Sun Belt League competition this year. No, Coach Blakeney talked about that on a call-in show he had earlier this week, and he, he said, I think both teams would like to have a chance to settle that on the field because you know, they're picked one, two by a lot of writers and a lot of people in the Sun Belt Conference, and I'll tell you what, this is a team that can certainly win the Sun Belt Conference. Well, they have definitely turned some heads tonight. Second and 10. Again, it's leak on the play action. Here comes Marshall on the rush. 
And the sack is delivered by Marcus Harrison. Down to the sidelines and Mark Martin. All right, Dave, just to touch a little further on what you were talking about with the schedule, Larry Blakeney, Blakeney knows it takes great players to win consistently. The old adage, recruiting the lifeblood of any program. He feels everything is in place for Troy to win consistently, and he has many goals and has reached many since 1991. And one of the main goals now is keeping Troy people in Troy during home football weekends. He says that's one of the main reasons for moving to Division 1A. They've only had eight home games the last two years there in Troy. Thanks, Mark. Troy has five home games this year. Third and 12, four wide for Lee. And whistle stop the play. And a flag is down. Boy, oh boy, after burning your second time out a delay a game penalty will cost Troy five third and 17 Troy needs the Marshall 40 to pick up a first down again four wide heard with some pressure the pass that is a catch and a first down at the Marshall 34. And it's Cray again. Cray with two big catches in this drive. Hey, that was a great throw by Leak right there. Marshall only rushed three guys. He had a little bit of time to sit back there in the pocket. And he makes a nice shuffle over here and throws a nice corner pass. This is a tough throw to make. You, you see you have to throw it under the, knees, under the underneath coverage and before the, over the top. So he does a nice job here on this corner route. Jonathan Goddard and Jameis Martin were closing in on Leak, and he calmly stayed in the pocket and delivered a strike to Cray to keep the drive alive. The handoff to Richardson, and there was just nowhere to go. Floyd Wright seeing some additional snaps because of some of the suspensions along the D-line for Marshall tonight made a big play. You know, we go back and talk about just uh, James Earl Cray. We said uh, he was probably the biggest surprise for this Troy team offensively as far as receivers go. And tonight he's had a big night for this team. And he gives somebody else for them to throw the ball to besides Sample. Leak with the pass, incomplete. Tried to get it to Sample. He's had a good night. Terrell had the coverage, incomplete. Stops the clock, 7.45 remaining. Troy with just one timeout remaining. Marshall has two. Boy, going into this ball game, you wouldn't think that Troy's passing game would be the thing that's really kind of moved him up the field, but they've been effective tonight, have over 190 yards passing so far, so this team's really been able to move the ball through the air tonight, and as you mentioned at the top, that's something they worked on all spring and all during two a days this year. Big play in this ball game, third and 13. Pressure on for Marshall, the defense. Pass is caught at the 27 yard line by Cray, far short of the first down. Willie Smith, happy with the hit. All right, interesting situation now for Larry Blakeney. This would be a 50 yard field goal attempt. It's fourth and seven. See this situation here. This is good throw and catch right here. It enables them to get up in this situation. Makes a decision pretty tough where you're standing right now. This would be a 43-yard field goal. The 50. They're going for it. Officially, this is fourth and eight. Marshall fans making some noise. And Troy has burned its final timeout. Boy, Coach Blake, you're not happy with that. You need to have timeouts if you're late in a ball game like this on the road. You want to have timeouts. You want to have something in your pocket there to be able to use. Olmstead has come on to the field. And Olmstead is going back into punt formation. So rather than attempt 
the long field goal. This would be about a 50-yarder or go for it on fourth down. Olmstead, the punter, has come onto the field. So at least for now, Troy is giving the impression they're going to kick the football. Yeah, and I, you know, Troy's known for running some trick play plays and things like that, but I don't necessarily know if this is a good time to do that. The way your defense has been playing all day, I probably think he's thinking if he can kick this out, keep him pinned down inside that 10-yard line and make them use the whole field, they've got the clock on their side as well. Olmstead going for the corner. And the kick will go out of bounds at the five. 27-yard punt. Marshall has the ball, but it's at the five-yard line. Good job by Thomas Olsted. 6.53 to go in the fourth. Troy clinging to a two-point lead at Marshall. Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative, one and the same. So Touchstone Energy is your local cooperative. In fact, it's a national network adding value and strength to your local cooperative and the local community. What's your connection to Touchstone Energy? Your friends and neighbors at your electric cooperative. Locally, they are Touchstone Energy, your local electric cooperative. Energy and the power of human connection. Call me. Really? Uh, of course. <laughs> So, you kiss her? Well, he said, I'm cutting you loose. Your student driver's going solo. Don't insure him with just anybody. Get a State Farm agent, someone who will help your teenager get the best protection and young driver discounts that get you the best price. No wonder so many families trust State Farm. Did he kiss her? Tennis. Every weekend. You? Twice a week. I can tell. Get fit, have fun, make friends. Log on to TennisWelcomeCenter.com and learn to play tennis fast. It's been a tough night for Mark McHale, Marshall's offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. Troy has a two-point lead, and Marshall will start this drive at their own five-yard line. You can see the frustration on his face right there. Uh, along with Larry Keck, he's up in the press box. He coaches quarterbacks and makes the offensive calls for Marshall. So very difficult situation here on your old five-yard line. Guillory in motion. And Earl Charles is able to squeeze his way out near the seven-yard line on first down. Boy, we just can't stress it enough, John. What a night this defensive line for Troy has had in this game. Yeah, you, we've, we've talked about it all all night long. I mean, yards, yards per game, 196 last season. Tonight, 21 yards rushing. It's an incredible number. I mean, so much credit has to go to this team, but also young offensive line in some positions for Marshall. They're just, they're just a work in progress, as Coach Pruitt says. Earl Charles again, and there is just nothing there. Charles maybe a yard near the eight. Well, and I'll tell you, this place is dead silent. Usually, you know, you get in this situation in Marshall teams in the past, they've had great quarterbacks to be able to lead the team from deficits before. There's no life in this place. Marshall's not moving around on the sideline. It just looks like they're kind of going through a practice right now. A key third down, third down and seven. Marshall at their own eight. They trail by two. Still to throw. The protection is good for a moment. And it finally breaks down as he gets up to the nine-yard line. So Marshall three and out. Another great defensive stand by Troy. Boy, again, they do a great job. Nope. 
got to give credit to the offensive line, but the defensive backs for Troy have covered Marshall receivers well all day, and he hasn't had time to do anything. So you put those two combinations together, you're going to have a lot of success. Well, the last time we saw O'Connor on the field, we didn't know if he would return after making a, a tackle on a kickoff in his own end zone, sends this one out, and will hop out of bounds at the 47-yard line, 37-yard punt, no return. Great field position for Troy. Well, DeMarcus Ware, this game tonight has virtually been his own personal highlight reel. He has had a fabulous game at defensive end. Why don't you just look at him? Gets his hands up. Cedric Sullivan on the other side of the ball. You're right. These, these two guys, all the credit in the world. With 4.52 to go in the game, Troy is out of timeouts. A field goal here would be huge. Handoff Richardson. Stopped shy of the 45. And I think you'll see Troy continue to do this, try to pound the ball in there, get yourself in the field goal, field goal range, and if they don't pick up a field goal, at least try to chew up as much time off this clock as they possibly can. The Marshals had their opportunities. They've had premium field position at times tonight just unable to take advantage you see coach Blakeney right there looking up at the clock he knows how important that is for him right now to continue to chew up as much time as possible samples is split out wide to the left here's Richardson trying to bounce it outside he's got the first down and he is down to the 36 yard line so Troy picks up a critical first down and they will move the chains Well, as we talked about, there's no energy in the stadium at all. There's, there's no fan support for this defense. There's uh, people walking around, so they've done exactly what they set out to do and we talked about at the beginning of this, take the crowd out of it. And they just continue to run the football on the outside here. He does a good job of bouncing it outside, picking up the first down. The only thing about bad thing about that is they stop the clock for a little bit until they get the chain set. You know, we've talked a lot tonight about Troy's upcoming games. Marshall goes to Ohio State next week and to Georgia the week after that. On the ground again. And it's Richardson to the 32. Well, you look at that com comparison of those two running backs right there that we just saw a second ago. Both these guys about equal amount of carries tonight. And uh, when both guys missed the spring practice and both of them missed a lot of time during two-a-days because they didn't want to get into contact, it's nice to have two guys that you can share the load with. Well, consider this, that last year, Aaron Leak and DeWitt Betterson combined for 80% of Troy's total offense. Betterson tonight, 15 carries for 26 yards. He did not break out. And yet, we're moving to the latter stages of this game, and Troy's trying to run out the clock. Well, we talked at the top how good these defenses are, and that's exactly the situation we have here at the end of the ball game. A marshal has called a timeout. The Thundering Herd with one timeout remaining. Third and six at the 32. So if Troy can somehow find a way to pick up this third down, they would put the herd in a world of hurt. Third down conversions tonight for Troy, six of 16. Just to repeat, in last year's game in which Troy beat Marshall at Movie Gallery Stadium, 33-24, Troy that night, one of 15 on their third down conversions, but they got the big plays when they need them, and they got the win. Bill Wilt is Marshall's defensive coordinator. And he needs to come up with a big play if Marshall has any hopes of trying to come back in this one. You see the timeout situation. Troy out of timeout. Marshall one remaining. Marshall's defense has been put in some bad situations. They've, they've kind of held up pretty well. You give up 17 points, that's not too bad. You want to expect your offense to put some points on the board, and that's what's happened for Marshall in the past. They've been able to rely on their offense to put points on the board. Right now, their defense has given up 17. 
and they're trying to do whatever they can here to prevent any more from being put on that board. This potentially could be it for Marshall. Third down and six. Troy at the herd, 32. From the eye, going to run the ball. This is Richardson trying to bounce outside, and he is able to reach the 30, but does not pick up the first down. It's fourth and a long three. And Marshall has burned its final timeout. Take a look here, Richardson. Marshall had a look, stopped a little bit. They gained about another three, but uh, they're in a situation here, I guess, where they were last time. Do you punt the ball down there, try to make Marshall drive it, you know, 60 yards to get in field goal range, or, you know, do you, you try to pick up the first down right here? I think if I'm Coach Blakeney, I try to punt them, knock them down there. They haven't been able to move the football. Well, Olmstead has a 43-yard field goal tonight, but I really don't think a field goal is an option for Troy. What if the kick is blocked? Olmstead's last kick, a 27-yarder, went out in the coffin corner and pinned Marshall back at the five-yard line, kind of set the stage for this current Trojan drive. Olmstead, you see, one of two on his field goal attempts tonight. Knocked home a 43-yarder, missed a 45-yard attempt. Well, he's been busy. Four punts for an average of 35 and a half yards, and two of those inside the 20. You know, you look at his stats from last year, from 40 to 49 yards, he was only two of eight in field goals, so that's another factor. Do you want to take that opportunity to, to try to do that? And they also had two kick block last year as well so as you mentioned you want to take those chances or you want to try to pin them down inside well look at this they're going to go for it or at least they're coming to the line fourth down and four Olmstead not on the field quickly to the eye formation gets a snap this is Richardson and he is stuffed curious call to say the least I really thought they were going to we had a flag down on the field as well they may have caught Marshall with too many men on the field because the way they ran out there and quickly snapped the football. I thought they were going to try to draw them off sides the way they sprinted out there. There's a flag down on the field. And Bob Pruitt is nearly out to the hash. Here's the call. Oh, and the penalty is against Marshall. They call it illegal participation. They may have had too many guys on the field or something. We have to take a look at the way Troy ran out onto the field right there and just kind of. infraction against the defense. Players running off the field. They got to get off. Five-yard penalty. Reaches the line to gain. That's the first down. Uh oh, that is a killer for Marshall. It gives Troy the first down. take a look at this I think what happened on here when they have Marshall did a good job of stuffing this up right here but uh, what probably happened is they had somebody back there for the punt and he didn't get off the field in time as Troy ran out there so now Marshall is out of timeouts and cannot stop the clock and Goddard is able to dive in there and make the stop Joel Winter in the game his first carry, the junior from Augusta, Georgia, and the clock is running. Second down and nine as we prepare to turn under two minutes. You see Marshall Coach was talking about that on the sideline that uh, actually was a nice play by Troy to be able to run him out there and kind of confuse Marshall a little bit. Now that's a heads up play to be sure. It's wider again on the carry. To the 22-yard line, it's third down. Closing in on 90 seconds to play. And Larry Blake, you can tell he's a little grim he's trying to hold back. Can't believe there will be any situation in which Troy would throw this pass to try to pick up the first down. 
Walker doing a great job snapping the ball with virtually no time left on the play clock. Line of scrimmage is the 21. Under a minute to go. Again, you see him running right in the center of the field there. You may see Olmstead come out here to kick a field goal, try to put this game away from or at least put Marshall in a situation where they have to drive the entire field for a touchdown. Well, they're in field goal range here, but that doesn't seem to be the plan. Play clock is down to 10. Closing in on 30 seconds to go in the fourth. Clock stopped, now 24 seconds to go. So Marshall will get the ball back with 24 seconds remaining. No timeout. Bob Pruitt furious on the sidelines. Obviously, amazing streak about to come to an end. Marshall has never lost when opening here at home in the new stadium. They've won 20 consecutive home openers. Remember, Marshall, no timeouts remaining. Hill. And he is sacked. And Marshall will be lucky to get another playoff. Eight sacks tonight for Troy. Hill will spike it and will stop the clock with eight seconds remaining. And to say the natives are restless would be a gross understatement. They are not happy with what's happening out on the field right now, that's for sure. And he's had no time to throw all day. Eight sacks you mentioned. Troy, all the credit in the world defensively against usually what's a pretty good offense for Marshall. On the flip side, they're ecstatic on the Troy sideline. They have come into Marshall and could be one snap away from pulling the upset and will take great momentum into their home opener Thursday night against Missouri. Hill going to send this one down the field. And the pass is... Is that caught? Incomplete. And that's the ball game. Larry Blakeney and the Troy Trojans have come to Huntington and defeated the Marshall Thundering Herd 17-15. Quite a defensive ball game. Boy, it's been just a struggle, it seems like, for both teams all night. Hard-hitting ball game, low-scoring ball game, just what we talked about coming into this thing, and it's amazing, you know, how, how good these, both of these defenses are. Aaron Lee, jubilant. Stan Hill, difficult to console. Troy wins the opener. 17-15 over Marshall. A fabulous defensive-minded game. We enjoyed bringing it to you. Want to thank our crew in the truck, my partner John Gregory, Mark Martin had our field story from Huntington this afternoon. Troy wins the opener. Looks like it's going to be a terrific season. This is Dave Weekly saying so long for the Troy Trojans Television Network. about this all the slow smoked ribs and chicken you can eat only $8.99 slow smoked in a real pit barbecue for hours and hours until they fall off the bone with all the potatoes garlic bread and coleslaw you can eat too all the ribs and chicken you can eat only $8.99 Boxster and an Audi TT. It is the all-new Subaru Legacy. 250 turbocharged horses guided by the traction and control of all-wheel drive. And if its superior performance doesn't amaze you, then perhaps this will. Visit your Subaru dealer for 2.9% APR for 63 months on every 2005 Subaru.
All the slow smoked ribs and chicken you can eat, only $8.99. Slow smoked in a real pit barbecue for hours and hours until they fall off the bone. With all the potatoes, garlic bread, and coleslaw you can eat too. All the ribs and chicken you can eat, only $8.99. New deep snapper and a new punter, and that is huge. So, watch the exchange in the opening punt. Joshua Hubbard back deep to receive this punt. Lyle Atkinson off the side of his foot. That was a shank, and he probably only hit it about six or seven or eight yards. Okay, that's got to make him a little shaky. This is his first punt, opening game of the year. He wasn't the punter last year. New snapper, new punter. A lot of exchange, you know, questions. They did a great job with the exchange. We'd like to welcome everybody to our live telecast here in Greenville, Tennessee. The first ever meeting between the Tusculum College Pioneers and the University of North Alabama. I'm Eric Thacker along with Matt Tenner. Glad to have you with us. Both teams exchanging punts on their first series and now it is Tusculum that goes to work with Tony Colston the quarterback with twin receivers to both sides Colston steps up in the pocket pump fakes and now he'll put the football on a tip and take off as he's belted out of bounds but not before he picks up five yards as he was knocked out of bounds by take a look at the offensive starters up front Tusculum was very good in this department last year Bailey Lewis Simpson Stevens and Leon the quarterback, Tony Colston, this is not a two-quarterback tandem anymore. He is the starter. That's and we'll right. have more on that later. We've got Absolutely. a lot of storylines to share with you in this first-ever meeting. Coach Frankie DeBusk of Tusculum College, Coach Mark Hutchman, the coach of the Roaring Lions of North Alabama. Second down and four. And you will see the spread for both teams. A lot of similarities between the two offensively and defensively. Throw the inside hit tipped at the line of scrimmage, and if I'm not mistaken, for North Alabama, that was Jay Snipe, the junior, out of Opeka, Alabama. Take a look at that defense: Vickers, Hunt, and Best, Tharp, Wisden, and Wright. The defensive backs are going to have a busy, busy night. Ferris Ogilby, and he's a good one. Snipe, Hardy, and Hill. All new except for Evan, o Evan Oglesby. He's an All-American back there. Other three guys are brand new into the secondary. Look for him to get tested by this Tusculum passing attack. Line to make is the 43. The Lions show blitz here. They come. Colston will make him pay as he goes over right guard, and then he is slapped. Oh, my. Lacey Hill came in and tattooed him. Tell you what, that was a called quarterback draw. Great play. They're not having a lot of luck dumping that ball off. He's getting a lot of pressure. They try to exploit that pressure on the outside, run the quarterback draw up the middle, and yes, he got belted.